G'day guys, welcome back to another Fair Income episode. In this episode, we recapped, reviewed our year of 2023 on behalf of like Fair Income, the highlights, lowlights, some of our experiences, as well as the things that happened in the uh, pop culture and the world scene as well. Um, before we get into the episode though, just want to have a quick, you know, heart to heart with you guys, you know. We said this at towards the end of the episode as we're getting towards it. So if you guys make it to that part of the episode, you will hear about it like in depth. But one thing, or one of our goals on behalf of like Fair Income is based off our statistics, we've got like, I don't know, like a 50% of you guys make it towards the end of the episode. Pretty good, not good enough. All right. One of the things we want to do going into the next year is have a relationship with our audience, you know, and that means getting your suggestions, getting your inputs, whether it's through the podcast under the comment section of this YouTube video. If you listen to it on audio, shoot us a DM on Instagram. Um, we don't have Snapchat, so I'm not even going to bother with Snapchat. Any other social media platform, shoot us a DMs. We want to get into making extra content. We want to be making episodes that we enjoy and that you guys enjoy. And by having your suggestion, that would only be made like right easy. I don't usually chat a lot like this. So with no further ado, honestly, it's been an amazing year. Hope you guys enjoy the episode. Peace. Gregorian calendar skipped 10 days in October of 1582 in order to make up for extra days which had accrued in the Julian calendar. So you did that research in between? <laughs> no, no, I knew. And I'm like, he oh. He it. said it way <laughs> better on so, the day. The so way what happened was the church wanted to skip and have two holidays back to back. So uh -huh. he skipped 10 days in 1582. The church that controlled the time, she goes, we're skipping 10 days. Today, for example, now it's December 20, it's December 15 today, yeah? It's like, I want to have Christmas and I don't want to wait any, anymore. Tomorrow's Christmas. And everyone in the town celebrated the next day. So they just skip 10 days. So I'm like, don't worry about time in this calendar, just start. That's why I don't, see why I don't reflect? <laughs> so one of the things I did in the last week, I listened to our 2022 recap. I don't know if you guys have listened to the episode, but it was actually really interesting to hear how um, things have changed. Like the first thing I noticed was the old studio. Like I kind of miss it. I don't know if you guys are the same. Like, it's nice being in the new studio, but that was like how we started, yeah. you know, compared to uh, at least the university studio. But w it was a 50 minute episode, really quick. And we spoke about like our favorite episode of the year. And we were all just chatting about different things. Yours was like Sheikh Samir. Um, I think Ali was even gone for a couple of months that year, but we we're talking about different things, goals that we had. And it was like, it was nice to hear. And I think one of the things I saw when I watched that is like, in the moment, you're like, why am I going to do a reflection podcast? Why am I going to do a recap video? And then a year later, you appreciate it so much more. Even just looking at yourself, it's like, oh, you know how I've grown or how this person's changed and stuff like that. So in the moment, you might not appreciate it, but then think it's like, would you want a video from one, two, three, four, five years ago of yourself speaking about your year, your greatest accomplishment, you know, and it was pretty good. I didn't yeah? never go back and listen to myself, ever. I don't know why. Not even good episodes? Bro, regardless of the episode, I don't like hearing my own voice. Yeah. I don't know why. It's just, I don't, do you guys have the same thing? I would I listen struggle. to the episode, but like if I'm speaking, I can't listen. I'll just go ba ba ba. Like <laughs> if the flow the of the conversation thing. is good Seriously? enough. Well, I, well, I 100%. You guys like have a podcast, like, get, like, not every day, get over it, man. I like, hear myself speak every day. If you don't care about here, listen to myself on the yeah. recording. <laughs> it's hard, man. Poor. Yeah, it's crazy. No, I honestly, honestly don't care. Just listen to the podcast, boom. If I say something, I'm like, you're stupid. You shouldn't have said that. You should have said uh, this But better. you don't have that feeling where you're like, ah, I can't. Yeah. Not on the podcast because the podcast is normal, but in different things. Like if I'm making, like, if you make like a social media video or you're watching a story or something, I'd listen to that. I'm like, yeah, cringe. Okay, you know, I don't want to listen again. Like I just record and post mm. like, if it's a story kind of How thing. about a snippet if it gets like put up of you? Can you listen to the snippet from start to finish? Yeah, why not? For your respect. Well, I respect yeah, that. Yeah, that's honestly. That's I think uh, like if... As Loves the sound of his own voice. Why is that impressive? <laughs> no, I think, but for like yeah. content creation, yeah, like you just get used to it. I'm taking a picture. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. even for a podcast, like you've done a hundred plus episodes, you kind of just get over it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You're skipping it. Yeah, no, I skip it. I'm I, skip what it. if you said something that, nice? Well, to me, that's why I just don't yeah. listen to it at all. Yeah, yeah. you going through it and then just skip. That's, it. That's, that's because, probably better because no, because no, I'll <laughs> have I'll effort. have certain episodes which I'll go back to and I'll be like, you know, like when you walk back from an episode, you finish out an episode and you're like, oh, that episode was actually good. And plus, I sort of have to listen back to it because of um. That's no, good. I uh, I sort of have to listen back to it because of um. You know when we're doing clips and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. So then I'll have to like go over it and stuff. Okay. But when I sometimes like for example, 
two episodes. One I think I've told you about was a Burak episode. I don't know the other one. Yeah, I went back to go, like go listen to it. You know what I mean? And I ended up finding myself finishing like majority of like It's actually nice listening to yeah. good apps. You know? Like, I did it that like after the last week when I did the recap. I'm like, man, this is hectic. And then I listened to another one of our episodes and like, it's yeah. actually good. Because it's been a year. We walked out of it and we said, man, that was an amazing recording. And then we don't listen to it. You know, but what's the episodes you go back to? Like, As what's, in from yeah, like the, so Burak and like Well, I sort of go back to every episode, but like I'm talking like past like couple of years and stuff. Like um like I went back to like a Leon episode. You remember back in the day, like oh, the Leon episode? That's ages ago, you know? man. But then I went back to it because I like the guest himself. Do you get him? You know, like certain guests, you're like, oh, damn, I forgot like what they sort of said on that episode. I won't go back to listen to what I had to say mm. or like what you guys had to say or something like that, you know? Then there was another episode I remember halfway through the year, the Umar Hanifa episode. I went back to listen to that because there was this period where I don't know what I was going through, but I was listening. I became a horse guy. You know what I mean? You have, oh, after Genghis Khan. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you remember yeah, after Genghis yeah, Khan, yeah. We, we had like a chat for two hours after the episode and then he was telling about horse and I'm thinking, guys, what a simple guy. Fights, he likes archery and he likes horse riding. He's done neither of them, but he likes them. Like, what is it about that? You know what I mean? So I'm like, Chang, let That's me give a it a warrior, sus. Bro. So one day I went to sleep. Like, I went to sleep listening to that episode because I listen to podcasts as I go to sleep. I was like, oh, it's actually like, there was like yeah. a lot of knowledge in that episode. You know, episode, you when know? you said, listen, go back, that's yeah. the first podcast I said that that's the one I want to go back to. Umar Hanifa? Yeah. yeah. That was a banger episode. Just because like the horsemanship, some of the sports and stuff. I'm a legend, bro. Mashallah. Actually, every conversation I have with him, obviously, I, I, don't, mm. I haven't gone back to watch that video itself, but every conversation I have with Omar is always something I take away. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Like not even one time I've had a conversation with him. He always talks about... Um, turning whatever it is right now your stress is into your groove. True. And there was some other things that he told me. I can't remember, but he just hit me, and I'm like, yeah. well, "Why did you just be practical game?" I, was, I, was, I haven't seen him recently, but I was with him this morning. Mashallah. And it was one thing like we're leaving the restaurant, and I said, "Oh, um, like I have to pay you for it because there was a couple of us." And then I said, "Oh, how much is it? Like you know the bill?" And he goes, "Oh, the rule is if someone's older, they pay, and if you really insist." You pay for my meal and I pay for your meal, so you don't pay for yourself. Because that's that, that's that's the rule that, ha and I'm like, that's actually like a nice thing to do. It's like okay, yeah. it's like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take you that. Know, you know what it is? I reckon. I was gonna say we're attracted to him, but <laughs> what, <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> no, I was gonna say like we're attracted, but what draws us to him? You know what I mean? There's yeah. obviously a quality that like we like about him. He's very calm, yeah. That's what it is. He's got a calm demeanor. And. He's very thoughtful in the words that he says. Like mm. he doesn't actually like speak for the sake of like speaking. And that's what I also took from that, like that Burak episode, you know, because it's very easy when you can listen back to an episode where you can tell by the other person who's speaking that they thought of every single word, like somehow. And it's an art, bro, like, you know, like the art of speaking. Mm. So yeah. it, it seems like, so I just have to say it, you guys have to go back to those two episodes. Yeah, facts, Yeah, go facts. back, make sure you listen to the Omar Hanifa and Burak episode, and then we might get them again. I think it's necessary. I feel from this year at least, one that I do want to go back to, and that's the only time I'll probably fight back my voice for a, for a particular purpose, was Yasin Mossi's one mm. from this, this year. year. It was over over Neymar Roberts and Dali Ayub? That was this no, year? No, no, I rate them too, don't get me wrong. Oh, I'm talking whoa. about this year, I'm not talking about 2022. Yeah. I'm talking about this year. Um, a lot of the boys that I spoke to, after I'd left, you know, usually you, you forget, it becomes foggy what mm -hmm. happened, what you said. A lot of the boys from the group or the crew that I know were happy, like, how that podcast went, they were like, you done extremely well on it, blah, blah, blah. But not to do with me. It's more so to do with how well Yes and Morsi answered the questions. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, okay, what is it specifically? And then they started naming these practical steps. I'm like, I don't remember him saying that. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, is it just because like, you kind of like, you just want to get the job done and then you leave and you're like, you, you just want to move on with your life? Or is it because you don't actually, or this is something that I want to work on for next year, is actually benefiting myself more than the other people who are watching the podcasts out of the conversations that I have here. So a lot of the times it's like, what do I ask in order for people to be happy with the conversation? But now I'm like, stuff that. I did this for a selfish reason to begin with, yeah. to gain benefit from the people mm -hmm. that we're talking to. So why don't I gain benefit properly? Mm -hmm. You know, And that's something that I want to work on for 2024, yeah. inshallah, when it comes to these convos. I think, I think also about like when... Because I know for myself, like being in a conversation with w the guests for an hour plus, it's hard to remember everything as well. Mm. It's always that aspect as well. Like mm -hmm. you're going to take something, Willie's going to take something else, or Ashra's going to take something. And like you can't expect to remember every single thing. <coughs> so I guess there's an ele element to it where you just have to accept. 
Yeah. But for me, mm-hmm. at least the Naima Roberts app, I remembered everything from it when I left. Yeah. The conversation with uh-huh. Sister Naima was like, because I was so intrigued by what she had to say mm-hmm. or what she was answering at the time when I had the focus and the cap- capability to actually listen. Like, I remembered everything when I left. And I was like, I started to implement certain things that she advised on. And then, obviously, uh, you, you fast forward the clock, obviously, we're, we're probably going through a worse time now because of the brothers and sisters in Gaza. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for them. Mm-hmm. But, um, Allah alam, if there's an element of that to it, that kind of takes yeah. away from your capability to learn mm-hmm. or to memorize it. I think Naima Roberts, you, if you sometimes speak about one or two things and you go deep, it's easier to remember, especially if there's like a story behind it. Mm. But sometimes when you have a guest that you touch on 10 things, it's hard. Mm. And that's why when Ali used to do those posts on social media about like the four takeaways from a guest, it actually summarizes the episode mm. and it's like an action step from it. So Stand maybe we need to get back on that. Get back on Ali. Definitely, bro. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> there's, there's favorite also- episode of 2023? What do you got? Well, I got a question. I got a question too. Like on that, yeah. Favorite episode of 2023. Yeah, you've said Yasir Morsi was for the second one. Oh no, no. I'm saying I want to go back and watch it. That's okay. the one that I want to go back and watch. It's not your favorite. Ep- it is. Uh, but second question is, what's your favorite episode you you think you performed on? In 2023 well, or just 20, twenty? Yeah, twenty like 2023. Yeah, because okay. we're doing a year recap. Yeah. I'll let you guys answer because I don't have one yet. Yeah, I'm thinking about it now. I'm trying to go back to the start of the year. Even pop up on Facebook, YouTube. YouTube. I just did it now. Done. My one, like my favorite episode, was I think Coach Amal, because I was surprised well, well. by the knowledge and stuff like that. Like to get obviously a sister on who's fitness based and stuff. I don't think we've gotten someone in that strength and conditioning slash PT. Mm-hmm. We've gotten athletes that do different things, but to get someone that had that much knowledge has that much of a story. Uh, I was just surprised and that was the episode I probably did like the most preparation and stuff. Mm. That was a great episode. I yeah. was considering that as well. Cuz yeah. even I enjoyed like, it a lot. Even with like with her yes the, like the commitment and of course the business she's growing in the community. But it's the level of um like training she does as well and the level she the standard she's raised for herself and the people around her in terms of even questioning us as like what's our level? Like it's that impressive, mashallah mm. like that was one thing. It's peak. It's why the, it's up there in the episode. It's the point one percent. If mm. you double our age, doing more weighted pull ups than us as a female, it's like, damn, I must be doing something wrong. Oh, and then you. she obviously has that community. She allows us to run those sessions and stuff. So we built a connection that, alhamdulillah, I'm really grateful for. And I was just surprised by it. Yeah. That was my favorite episode. I think so. So you two have the same basic. No, that, that, that was one of. It was going okay. to be, but it's not. It's on your Mount Rushmore of okay. 2023. Yeah, Mount Rushmore. Yeah, it made it. <laughs> Um, my favorite episode would probably be the one with Sam. Oh um, yeah, because even look, even though it was maybe like the third time we got him on, but just the idea of, of course, someone we've known for a while, but then also someone in our community doing their thing, their craft, and mm. working on it. You know, being obsessed in terms of that's their lifestyle and talking about, you know, the things you want to do in life, your aspirations, and be able to connect more on a deeper level, mm-hmm. getting the opportunity because. Of course, with friends in general, you don't see them as often. And then when you have a podcast an hour sitting down, you have an excuse to go in more detail. <laughs> yeah. So I think, and especially like with all of us together, not just myself with him, all of us having that same conversation. It was. What are you, great. honestly, I forgot a lot from that episode because it's like Sam and Blur yeah. and we, we hung out with him in Thailand. Like I remember talking it to him about lot, goals and stuff. What, is there something that stood out like there was an action that you took from it or so it was just the vibe? Because the vibe is often important yeah, to you. Yeah, like for me, it's mostly just being surrounded ar- about around the right people and you know just talking about what you prefer to speak about and you so just a more, it was a more general True. outlook and you know what it is as well like with the same type of episodes the the conversation it's there's a different dynamic to it do you get what i mean yeah. you it's it's more of a conversation it's a dialogue it's back and forth you know what i mean there's not like that compared to if you get a coach or melon or whatever you guys technically come in with uh, like questions. It's not really about you. You like you'll ask questions for your mum or something like that on the podcast. So the conversation dynamic, I'm guessing, would probably be part of it as well. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. And it's also because it's something we we prefer as well to have yeah. these type of conversations. Of course, with some guests, it's a bit difficult too because first of all, they have more information about that topic, so we l- allow them to speak more on that because it's just out of respect as well. But then being able to go back and forth with the dialogue, you do benefit a lot more as well. So it, those type of things where we're trying to work towards that, it can go a long way in terms of making difference in. That's good. Mm. Do you find yours? Probably Sheikh Samir. 
Either him or Yasser Sam- Moussi. Back to Sam- Rakiyas, man. Sam is a gun. Yeah. Well, I'll be honest nah, with you. He's a gun, yeah. Every time he says something, bro, it's similar to Omar Hanifa, yeah? Every time I have a conversation with him, he always yeah. gives me a gym. Always. Yeah. Like, and he's just the most likable guy, man. Yeah. No, you can't, bro. So true. And you know what? Actually, stuff, like, um, so I was in Medina with him. And then I went Flex And I, I literally saw him For like half an hour Not even He was really busy He had studies And he goes I was on my way Back to the airport mm-hmm. And he goes Oh I'm free after Asr So I said Let's go for a walk You know I'm walking with him And he's just chatting with me He's taking me around He goes Let me sh- give you a tour Of Majid al Nabawi And then he walks me To my hotel And when I'm chatting with him I'm like Man it, it made me think That like this guy loves me and I'm like the closest person to him. Facts. You know that story of the Prophet Facts. Muhammad Facts. Sallallahu Alaihi where they say um, everyone felt like they were the closest companion to him, you know? Yeah. And I think Sheikh Samir, Allah Alam, how he does it, may Allah reward him, Shalom. but he has this vibe that anyone that just chats with him, you feel like you're the closest to him. I don't yeah. know if you guys have yeah. the same thing. Yeah, fact. amazing. Hundo. And I'm just like, how? You know, He's the only person I feel that way with. Like when you chat with him, you feel like you're the closest mm-hmm. to him and you have this secret connection no one else has. Mm. And I'm like... What is going on right now? Yeah. Chef Bilal's up there too with that that kind of vibe. Yeah, but maybe Chef but Bilal's the of is a bit, a, yeah. relatability. Yeah, he relates bit to us better. Yeah. He's younger and. and but I feel like he can talk to. Not saying Sheikh Bilal can't, by the no, way. No, no, no. Sheikh Bilal definitely can. I threw it in but there just to. Yeah, shake you but up Samir has a way of talking to everyone regardless of like. Like he's a rich and yeah, right? Regardless of your rich and your Lebanese, that, that. You know yeah. what I mean? He just has a. Like a way of like yeah. connecting, you know what I mean? So and plus, he's a talker. He can talk. He yeah. can hold his. Bro. He can hold his own. You know, bro. I missed that episode and I haven't listened to it. Do you recommend it? Bro. I, the it's not really the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely the lowest. <laughs> I could you not? I can <laughs> listen to my own voice. The episode was a lot more focused on um, just social media and so on and so forth. Yeah. So it wasn't as uh, beneficial as the conversation to me after the podcast. So having the conversation with him after. Not about chunks, not about all the, the situation of him going overseas and being able to facilitate Umrah for these guys. But the conversation after was very important. Yeah. Like him being candid in the fact that he doesn't have to be careful of what he says and him being able to actually be open on stories that he's experienced and then relating that back to things that in my life I'd struggled with at the time or and then me kind of just picking it up, but picking that apart and then going, okay, this is how I want to move forward, inshallah. This is a nice wake up call. It's mm-hmm. a bit of a shake up, and it's good to have somebody like that around, because, and like him and Leon, like I, I consistently ask Leon for his advice when I can, but um, whenever I get their perspective on things, it'll tell me whether or not I'm far off, or whether I'm closer than I think I am. Yeah, Does that makes sense. Because you consider them to be a bit balanced. Yeah, Alakumi yeah. is another guy that I, I, I reference whenever I. I'm going about yeah. my days because yeah. f- like I respect their opinion. I think we need Leon and Sheikh Samir back in Melbourne, huh? Yeah, bro. We need these Samir's guys back. back. <laughs> no, like long term, like yeah. we need them. Yeah. He, we need the them. He's not back. Sorry, he's yeah. he'll be back in like two weeks, inshallah. inshallah. So he'll be back. Let's go. Um, what do you got? Favorite app? Oh, favorite episode, um, and this sort of ties into what Sue said to um, what he just said there when he was talking about like after the episode, the conversation after the episode. It's a random one. It's going to be interesting. But one of my favorite episodes was the Khan Offley episode. Okay? okay. But it wasn't because of the episode. I feel like the episode like, didn't do Khan like, justice. Do you get what I mean? Like, how do I say it? Like, the, the conversation afterwards that we had on that um, like post-podcast or whatever was obviously 10 times better. But that's because it's in a relaxed environment. I think the cameras well, are not on. Like, Maybe even just me speaking We weren't the tightest with him pre-podcast I wasn't on the podcast no. But like I don't know how tight you guys all no, were We can't like have you met But you not every guest is like that though. That's the thing But that's like, where like It kind of You get a bit closer with them You get more comfortable But this is where I was tying with the Khan Because I said the episode didn't do it justice Was because of the fact that He's in He's like a, He's a timid He's a reserved guy And all that kind of stuff So regardless of how much we get him on the podcast It won't do it justice You know what I mean So And then when he spoke to us afterwards The podcast Bro, it made me realize, like, Luki, like, I'm kind of grateful. Like, you know, those type of conversations when you have afterwards with an episode, it's like, when, what are the chances I'd ever meet, like, a guy, like, not specifically Khan, do you get what I mean? But random people, like, I guess, like, a coach or Mal is from this place or, like, Sam or something along those lines. It's like, they very rarely you'll have those, like, conversations where you can walk back and be like, oh, like, I learned a couple of things from that person. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, his one was because his story is a bit touching. Do you get what I mean? Like, he had a very, like, like a very, very, like, touching story. But in terms of like my favorite episodes, in terms of like like performing and just chatting, random, but it'd be Hannah, bro. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, Hannah episode. Was that, that our longest ever episode? Yes, I think so. Yeah, it was. It was, it was yeah. 
It was he two hours. He got hit two hours. Justin hit two hours. Too, or yeah. He, he hit. That I've conversation. Never seen two besides that one. That conversation could have gone. For, that was just before the uh, Sam Samuel yeah. episode. The only reason it got cut short is already long enough itself. <laughs> Was because of like <laughs> that's like, short. Yeah. The longest ever episode ever cut short. It was yeah. like a four hour like episode. Do you know? What I mean? But it's like it relates back to the same type of thing, where it's like it's in a relaxed environment. Yeah. I, I, I don't really care what Hadid says to be honest. Like let's let's just chat. Do you know what I mean? It's like that type yeah. of vibe, yeah. you know. But um, I think actually yeah, that's something we need to go into for twenty twenty four because like I was uh, we're talking pre podcast about Andrew Huberman mm-hmm. and one of the things like you saw that he was jacked. I think it's because Cameron Haynes he did that video. And then I saw Cameron Haynes, you know, um, the way he does podcasts with guests. Before the podcast, they spend the day together. They run, they shoot, and they lift. They do one of those three and they have a nice meal. They do all three. Yeah, Sheikh, better get ready, cuz. Yeah. So, so they, <laughs> they, do, they do all three. What are you going to do with him? He's going to go for a run. We do run, run, lift, run, run lift, yeah. But it's like just spending that time together and then it's just, just that deeper connection. You have the chat and then you go on the podcast. I feel like it would just level up. And yeah, it's nice that connecting with a lot of these guys when it's first time meeting them. Because sometimes a guest is tight with Sahel or Welly or someone and then the rest of us don't know him. So it's a nice thing to do. You know, he's actually really good at making us all feel comfortable. Abu Tamiya. Abu Tamiya was... that this year? That was last year. Yeah, yeah. But he's good. He was very good at it, bro. Yeah. He's one of the boys, though. But he made you feel like um, uh, Ashraf was talking about Sheikh Samid made us feel. Oh, yeah, like yeah. Like as yeah. if you're his best mate. Yeah. And we're looking at him like, bro, like... Uh, I remember I told you guys I had misconceptions of Abu Taymiyyah before. Yeah, yeah. Based yeah. off of what everyone was talking about online and so on and so forth. And then I actually listened to him and then I actually met him in real life and I'm like, bro, he is one of the best human beings I've met. Mm. Allah. And yeah. then I, I, I don't like the violations that he copped this year in regards to, you know, like the prayer stuff. And Do you think it's like... Which violation? You know, when he was praying the other way, people were kind of... Oh, when he was tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah. he was tired, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think it's like a Teddy thing where... Because we see them in small snippets, like Teddy, people think he's like this hardcore, mm, yeah. you know, opinionated guy. Then they meet him, he's so nice. And I will tell you, I thought he was going to be a harsh guy, like you know. And you meet him, he's just the friendliest guy, yeah. you know. So maybe it's, it's at that way we only see snippets. I will tell you, it doesn't come off the cross as harsh, does he? I thought he was like a because yeah, it seems like because the messages that he sends are always heavy. It doesn't seem like from the snippets that you see. Okay, yeah. So from the snippets that you see, it's only heavy messages. Mm. It's only heavy, but, but like if we're if we're using like the metric as like hobless or something, or that yeah. one, yeah. I will tell you, it's not even on that. Like hobless seems like the biggest piss take, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, crazy. Uh, well, that's was, that's a one on the bucket list, boys. That's, that's the hobless one. Definitely, I was gonna say, convince him. I was gonna say, transitioning from that sure. conversation, yeah. Um, obviously, this year, new environment, obviously, like Ashraf was saying, the last time we recorded this type of like recap for 2022, we were in the bungalow, in the bunker. What are we calling it? It was shed. The shed. The shed. Yeah, where where fading can pretty much, like grew and started. You know what I mean? Yeah. And obviously, now we're in a whole new environment. We're in a studio. We've got like, as of last episode, we finally got lighting. <laughs> but how's it feel, boys? Obviously, twenty twenty three. Like have our own automobile as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. If only the camera just switched my hand while we this angle. But um, yeah, how do you guys like rank that? Like, do you guys ever think about that? Like the fact that you come to a studio to like record episodes has that like hit you or it's just chang it's just another thing i think because now it's been a few months and now it's become a normal thing only until you mentioned it mm-hmm. where it's like okay we're actually at a studio it's not at someone's house like yeah. you know what i mean mm-hmm. so it's a bit, it's not as like personal to be more professional in a way mm-hmm. um but it just shows like how many steps we've taken but then i think we quite often forget the steps we take because it becomes so normal in a way where we're always thinking about the next thing, the next thing. We don't take that step back and appreciate where we've come, where we've come basically, like how much we've improved. Because I think there's also, like like you said, the lighting and all like the setup in general, in terms of things to improve, even in a few weeks' time, we're going to have a few more other things in the background or whatever it is. So these kind of things, the steps taken forward, I think we just, next year, I feel like we need to make the time more as a group to appreciate these things. Like even the live show we did. Oh yeah, like yeah. that's a big deal as oh, well. Yeah, no one knows that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh no, like <laughs> we completely media. forgot about it. Well, like, you know what? But I don't want to hype myself up. You know, you're talking about best perform thing. You should, bro. Give yourself flowers. The one <laughs> in Sydney. Cliche. The one in Sydney was crazy. Yeah, Bruce actually told us about that. But the way you performed, yeah. mm-hmm. compared to Melbourne, I'm not hyping myself. But so I, I really do this. Well, bro, like, you out should, of ten, bro, you should. Comp- say what you did in Sydney, what you did in yourself. Melbourne, because then so I can understand what, how Melbourne's difficult. For us, because there was three of us on the stage alongside two guys, we had to pick their brains. 
and a lot of us were thinking about each other and how we can allow the other person to kind of come in and be able to ask conversation. We had like 30 minutes, bro. Let's be honest. And sister um, Nadira, we're going to have a conversation <laughs> with Olive Tree. Huh? You're gonna, you can't cut us 30 minutes short on a live podcast yeah. and already ask all the questions you want to ask before. <laughs> I'm joking, yeah. I'm joking. Now. Thank you to Olive Tree and Melbourne Muslims for hooking up. Walla. Walla, we really appreciate it. But the one in Sydney had more time and also made it a lot easier to be able to only have two people to switch conversations with. So it was pretty easy to, to intertwine Sheikh Bilal and Sunnah guy because the conversation was dictated by one person as opposed to three people. Two would have been okay if we had an hour and a half, but three people on a pod for 30 minutes, two shuyukh, no, no problem. But the Sunnah guy and Sheikh Bilal don't speak for short spurts. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask, did I anyone record it? Like, can we post yeah, it? Yeah, we've on got a record. Sydney one? Yeah. But we we're still, Shoaib, you got to <laughs> send it, bro. You oh, gotta, you're waiting on you that audio. Send it, bro. <laughs> you got to send it. You and Eamon, Eamon's a cheeky bugger, mate. He's got to send us the. the, the They're probably not even it. watching this episode <laughs> right now. We'll send this clip. This clip you got to send. <laughs> I'm going to send it in the. In the I'll probably send us a photo clip first. Hey, but that, that, that was honestly a big accomplishment. Like to actually yeah, do a live huge. podcast. Obviously, maybe it was a bit quick in the planning. We weren't like all, you know, in the loop and with how it was going to run, the time the and stuff like that. As well, yeah. But man, the, to say we did a live podcast in front of maybe 200 plus people, obviously in Sydney and Melbourne and stuff, mm -hmm. it's a massive accomplishment. I liked what you, what you did there. 200 people. In the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which one had 200? <laughs> <laughs> or was it the combination? Uh, who knows, man? Together, I we, we could suss the tickets. Yeah. It was like 140 mm. plus uh, workers in Melbourne, stuff like that. So obviously, it was good numbers and we did well. That's a... Uh, Step one. Maybe that's the 2024 goal, inshallah. Maybe a live event. A big one. Get some big names down. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that the event awesome. plan, I can try to hook it up, inshallah. Oh, an audible. <laughs> 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 scared. Yeah, it's funny. Do we Oh, that's crazy. Does that sound bad? We <laughs> no, 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 no. The whole Do time when you were saying audible, I thought you were saying audible. What? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Because the way that she spoke, he just spoke fast. No, no, no. You're not mispronouncing stuff. He's missing <laughs> stuff. That's, that's what's going on, bro. I'm telling you. Well, he's, he's I think it's gone. the word O, oh, but my ears are probably sensitive to the word O. Oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, on to uh, the next part. How does this year like rank in amongst other years? You know, do well, you guys do you guys do that? By the way, do you guys go and um, like sit down, like reflect, and go, okay, cool. This year's past or this year's coming to an end. I know, I feel like you two is definitely with Seuss. <laughs> 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 it's like you know the answer. No, it's, <laughs> it's not a, well, it's not a violation. Do you get what I mean? You're right though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Asha was telling me the other day that like, well, can you say that fact about how Marisa? like uh, a year is a myth? percent of men are... Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Asha, like... We're, we're at a restaurant and the gym's like, um, damn, I should Google actually this. Is that our Jenna? No, 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 where Glenny's. were we? Just we're set Glenny's. the scene and then I'll say it. All right, so we're at Glennie's or whatever and it's just, just piss taking, like nothing serious or whatever. Do you get what I mean? Oh, it's just when this guy comes back from his um, it's Glenny Crabs, yeah? honeymoon. Yeah, yeah, when he comes back from his honeymoon. Sorry, or like anniversary. Anyway, he comes back and we're just chilling, this, this, that. And anyway, this guy goes, we're having just a regular conversation. And you know, Ashraf, Allah Habibadik, he just randomly <laughs> chucks out the most random facts, yeah? And it's a normal conversation. I don't know how he got triggered, but he randomly just goes, Oh, so apparently that they say that like, like, because we're talking about goal setting. I think he introduced the conversation of goal setting. He's like, let's start next year. And he goes, no, let's not start next year. Let's start this year. There's still like a month left. I go, what? And then after he goes, they say that like, these are, well, you say the so quote. Uh, we're just, we're chatting with the gym just about goals and everyone's making up. Like I'll start in two weeks. I'm like, just start now. But like, what's the quote? What's the quote? Don't worry about time. And I said, um, like, because the thing about the calendar, people, I'm like, the calendar's made up. Don't worry about the calendar. He's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, the Gregorian calendar skipped 10 days in October of 1582 in order to make up for extra days which had accrued in the Julian calendar. So you did that research in between? <laughs> no, no, I knew. And I'm like, he oh. He it. said it way <laughs> better on so the day. The so way what happened was the church wanted to skip and have two holidays back to back. So uh -huh. he skipped 10 days. In 1582, the church that controlled the time, she goes, we're skipping 10 days. Today, for example, now it's December 20, it's December 15 today, yeah? It's like, I want to have Christmas and I don't want to wait any, anymore. Tomorrow's Christmas. And everyone in the town celebrated the next day. So they just skipped 10 days. So I'm like, don't worry about time in this calendar, just start. That's why I don't, see why I don't reflect? 
<laughs> it's not it. It's really you. And, but you know the funny thing is, that's how you saw the conversation. The way that you saw the conversation <laughs> is even more so of a reason for him to reflect. Do you get know what I mean? Yeah. Because there is no end to a year. There's no start to a year. You know, did you get that? Don't, one? Don't, don't count the days. Make the days count. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> oh. <laughs> This guy's gonna quote Tim Ferriss in a couple of minutes, and <laughs> no, he doesn't rate any of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> but he quotes them. <laughs> the well, this quote, bro. <laughs> I don't even know who said that. I know that's fine. Oh, that's um, yeah. But yeah, so yeah, going back to the original. So you, question. you don't reflect on the year, like when obviously we did last year reflection, but it's not a personal thing. You get a journal and you write about your year. No, only reflection I do is probably on the day. Like if, for example, that day I stuffed up, I didn't pray fajr on time, or I didn't do A, B, C. Probably look at myself before I go to sleep, but I gotta fix that. That's about it. Oh, you do that? I have to. At night time? Because my brain runs yeah. a lot. Like, even when I'm about to go to sleep, if I don't tell myself, because you might die tomorrow anyway, like, I'll sit there and think about what's going on for the next day and all the pressures and the stress of work, which is one thing I need to work on. Um, and this is something that actually, this is why you probably haven't seen me as much, or because a lot of things have been on, obviously, full time work, but work's ramped up. So for me, it's compartmentalization. I know this word has come across a couple every of years, years ago. I'm well. not going to lie. Every I'm recap video. No, no, no. I'm not going to lie. He's been sober with that word for a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. You've been yeah. kind of sober with that word. But I forgot Two it. Two years. Now bringing it back, yeah? Yeah. Kind of right on the wall at home. <laughs> bringing it back. And this is you know, Tim Ferriss. is Charlemagne the God. But um, no, it's just like, I want to be able to <coughs> switch on and off like thoughts, um, feelings, emotions about certain things be a lot more. Uh, I need to build like very strong skin, like thick skin. And in order for me to be able to be emotional when I need to be, be not emotional when I don't need to be, be able to kind of like maneuver in a manner that's going to be uh, appropriate for the time. Does that make sense? Mm. Pick, the, pick my heels to die on, you know, because not everything is. And if you're too emotional... Everything becomes a hill to die on, and then when the actual time comes, you're you're not ready for it because you fought so many battles that weren't necessary. Let me ask you one thing: Was there a moment you realized that, or was that just like an overall like like summary? Because you can easily say that. Do you get what I mean? You can easily just like reflect and be like, okay, cool. I know that I don't have the thicker skin. Blah blah blah. It's usually your dealings with people that that reveal that to you. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. for me, quite often it'll be like um, like for example. People that are close to you, they've said something and then you kind of crack it and then you go, okay, look, I understand that there's a premise that there's an agreement between you and me that we're family members or we're cousins or whatever it is um, and that we're going to end up becoming friends again after what I've said. But it's like, why did I have to say it to begin with? Do you know what I mean? Why didn't mm -hmm. I just be a little bit more conscious in the moment, not allow my emotions or my feelings to get the best of me and then for me to just pull the handbrake? So now I just gave up. Was at the start of this year, I was like, bro, I'm not gonna say anything to anyone to like that I'm gonna end up regretting later. I want to consciously put that effort in. And you can't know. really do that, can you? I can. Yeah. I, it worked this year, alhamdulillah. I haven't had okay. I haven't had many fights, to yeah. be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with the people that are, are closest to me. I feel like I've chilled out a lot. Yeah. So um, in a way you do Loki do reflection then. Yeah, in his day own to way. day. I just yeah, day to day. day, day, yeah, day, yeah. day, mm -hmm. day. So like, but you won't look at the occurs. you won't look at the year like holistically and then be like and you don't do goal setting, do you? <laughs> Chill. The way you ask that question. Only for work. Only like for work, uh, ta uh, work tasks and stuff. <laughs> I don't know. You just, just. I didn't like. Uh, you know yeah. I, mean? I don't know. Just it came across like that, maybe. Yeah. Like, like, like you don't achieve your goals. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's not like that. A lot of people. It's if you have a good enough systems, most of the time you achieve everything you want. You don't have to be specific and write it every day. I don't have an excuse why I don't. Does yeah. that make sense? The difference between me and someone else. Someone else would be like, oh, because I don't want to set a ceiling. Yeah. On what I do. It's bullshit. Because I'm going to be honest with you. I feel like, I feel like, I just don't do it. Like, it just, colors. it's not something that I can do. I've tried on a number of occasions mm. um, to create checklists, to create structure, to create A, B, and C. But I feel like having a very limited stencil will affect my, because I'm very creative, like the way I think. The way I do my thing is just creative stuff. So like putting myself in a box would just harm my capability to be effective in what I do. You feel restricted. <laughs> yeah. This guy's laughing at me, bro. I'm not. We're laughing. Are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing at me? No, I'm laughing because 
you said the word creative and all of a sudden you just look straight into my eyes. Uh, <laughs> I, look, I do think you are Allah Mubarak. You're very creative though. Inshallah. <laughs> I, I think I don't know. Is that a What are head? you looking at Mars like that, man? I don't know. Bruce, why are you laughing? Just go, go. Okay, I think for you, Sahel, like goal setting, I understand completely. But I really think if you found an avenue like to reflect, you know, like even like write it down journaling, you might actually enjoy it. Because like, I know you're a reflective person and just being a bit more like, because I don't know how often you do it. You might do it when an incident occurs, you might do it every night. But if you did it a bit more frequently, I reckon you'd, because you're a very person that would, um, you if something happens, like you actually think about it, you ponder it and you try to reflect and improve on it. Like you're conscious of it. Sometimes things happen and people just move past it, but you'll be conscious like for weeks. It's like, no, nah, I want to get better on this. Someone said this and your brain's always thinking like that. Mm -hmm. I could journaling could help like a lot with that. And that's journaling would be your steps, like you said about Fajr or whatever it is. It's your personal development avenue. And it doesn't have to be a goal. I'll never not do anything. I'll never say I'll never not do anything. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. In the past, I used to, maybe three, four years ago, I'd say, nah, never me, you know. I'll never do A, B and C. But now I'm like, when you grow up, you, you understand that you have to be a lot more open-minded, but you never know. What you think is... <laughs> what are you looking at for? <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Can I have a serious convo? I'll, 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 I'll look at him. I'll look at him. Go, go, go. Yeah, no, anyway, so... Uh, I, go, go, I, I'll, never, I'll never discount anything or anyone in regards to... Um, in regards to things that I can implement in my life in order to get better. I feel like that's the only way as an adult to move forward and be able to kind of make changes is to be open to changes. And then um, when instances occur... You're kind of not boxed into whatever you, you you used to do or how you how you are used to dealing with things. You kind of just say, okay, is there another method? Is there another way? Is there a better way? How do we get there? And um, uh, what's what's the most efficient or effective thing to do? Do you know where twenty twenty three ranks compared to other years? Personally, professionally, fair income wise, everything. Like when you look at the year, you're like. Last year was a better year, or you know, obviously COVID last couple of years, you know. Mm. But this is your first year, twelve months straight. You literally worked. It wasn't like half year working, half not like last year. Yeah. Um, um, enjoyment wise, I probably wasn't the highest rank because obviously working full time is not the best. To be honest, with you. No, I love MCs, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, for me, probably twenty twenty would be like twenty twenty one. I think would probably be up there. Twenty 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 one. That COVID era was. That was lit. Changed needed yeah. everything that I needed to do. I done everything I needed to get out of my system. I got it out, reflected, done what I needed to do, and moved on. Uh, got better as a human being in general. But this year, I feel like kind of stagnated a little bit. And but I, I believe the growth this year was mainly understanding that if I don't put conscious efforts into do things, nothing's gonna change. Nothing's gonna happen, and I'm gonna stay in the same position that I'm in now. And obviously we've had conversations off the podcast in certain facets of my life that I understand now there needs to be a conscious effort that needs to be made in order for me to be able to get there and to reach certain goals. So I go, okay, one thing here is a nice wake-up call is the fact that I need to be, I need to be on the ball uh, more than I have been in the past because motivation doesn't do anything for me anymore. That, that the it, idle talk or, or, or speaking... Uh, or, or like, like for example, lectures and what, what shiuch say and what this person says and what that person says doesn't hit me unless I consciously tell myself, okay, now you need to deep this properly, you know? Mm. So that's probably the only thing, probably second, third. Maybe, Maybe you need like a Mount Rushmore of your yeah, best yeah, years. Yeah, Mount Rushmore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What about you? I know you reflected on this because I've never compared years. That's something I, you do, so yeah? I, no. Nah. Oh, this first time for you? I don't, because I was having, I was chatting with someone the other day, Sam. Sam actually mentioned that he goes, because um, you know how Sam's very much into that stuff, you know? Um, and he was like reflecting on his like last couple of years and he asked the question, he goes, oh, how does this year rank? Like something along those lines, you know so I've I mean? never heard that before, yeah. Yeah, and then after I was like, you do, I think I probably do that like mentally, but I don't, I don't actively wait till the end of the year or at the start of the new year and be like, okay, cool, how does this like rank amongst the other years? But if you're asking um, how does it, Similar to Seuss, it's been like a very, very, it was, it's, it's a weird year for me personally, you know, weird in the sense that it's the first time I don't, I'm not doing something actively full time, you know, because for all my life, I've always been a student, you know what I mean? So the first year that I'm not actually a student, you know, and then after it's also like I'm waking up, going to work every single time, but I'm not at a work where I'm committed, 
Do you get what I mean? Because you're sort of at like that fork road in life. You know what mm. I mean? Um, and it's good and bad. You, you know what I mean? It's good in the sense that because all these years I've always said, oh, I can't wait till I have a bit of free time where I don't have to, how do I say, I'm not like um, compliant to something else. You know what I mean? I don't have to do it. There's no responsibility like on my shoulders for the first year. That Technically, the only responsibility I had was like fair income. You know what I mean? And just rock it up to work. You know, but it's not work as in like it's not like your work type of thing or your work. You know what I mean? It's it's just bread. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you want to say a point? No, no, I'm listening. And then after, um, so it's weird in that sense because that's all <coughs> I've ever known in the past, and now this year it's like you have to keep your head above water a little bit because you're thinking, okay, it because I'm a very like how do I say it? Everything that I do has to amount to something, whether in the long term or the short term. You know what I mean? Like I have to be working towards something. I can't just be like stagnant. Do you get what I mean? But then you have to mentally realize that like sometimes that part of stagnant, it allows you to do things that I couldn't do before. You know what I mean? It was just like literally like think, you know what I mean? Like for example, if I'm going to inshallah do <coughs> A, B or C in two, three years time, you know what I mean? I'm making an active decision now. Not, I've always been felt, felt like in the last couple of years I was like catching up to decisions, you know, or whenever I'm in that moment with that decision, I'm asking myself, oh, like maybe if I like, like maneuvered a bit this way or maneuvered it that way, then I could have like attacked this okay. situation different. You know what I mean? I don't know. Obviously, your how you look at your year. Sometimes you might look at the every day, mm -hmm. but I think, like now looking back at twenty twenty three for you, you spent a month solo traveling, first time in your life. Yeah, true. Whole month of Jan, pretty much, or maybe even longer. And half of February. Yeah, so so a month and a half. You went on a boys' trip. Yeah, Thailand, overseas, Muay Thai. Never done that. You graduated this year, didn't you? I'm graduating two days on Monday or See? four days or whatever. Yeah. So these type of, I, I thought like this year is the year that you'll probably look back on the most mm. compared to 2022. Like, I don't know what you, it might be. Each year might be different, but like, I thought that was three major things. Yeah. But I thought this year would be up there for you. Cause that's actually like hectic. Like for me, Thailand always gonna, is the year I moved out. Obviously like did my Walima. Mm -hmm. I did the travels as well. It's like, they're actually big things. So you might, sometimes like I'm looking at, I'm like my personal development, for example, with me, Last year, I looked at like the goal, the, mm. my end of year. We did a lot of challenges last year before I got married. Yeah, yeah. Fact, How yeah. many challenges <laughs> yeah, we right, did. Yeah. It was a new group chat every day. Yeah, I did. I read 50 books last year. Mm -hmm. This year, I, I, I hit 10. Mm -hmm. And I felt that like, you know, I was like, no, nah, I don't need to. A lot of times the books are repeating itself. But it was that avenue of how I was uh, developing as a person. Mm -hmm. And then I felt that this year. And I'm like, damn, like it actually, you yeah. know, you, you're seeing the difference. But then I'm like, how many things did I accomplish? So it might be one area where you might be slacking people, it's health, reading, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But there might be so many other things that are so good that it makes a good year. Yeah, fact. I think it's it's the perspective you have on those things. You know what I mean? Like like I said, in the last couple of years, I didn't have time to like, I guess, ponder over it. So everything was just go, go, go. You know what I mean? But one of the things that I like, I learned this year, it's like everything sort of like amounts to something. You know what I mean? Even though you didn't do like a lot, but a lot of the things you've done like compiled and it amounted to like that one thing. And I know naturally myself as a person, like I'm a, it is what it is type of person. So there is no time to like celebrate wins. You know, people that do birthdays, do graduation parties or like all of that kind of stuff. I've never been like that sort of person. You know what I mean? It's like, what's the next thing? You know what I mean? And if there isn't a next thing, then th this is the bad side to it. Do you get what I mean? Is you sort of like decrease your value in that sense. You know what I mean? Because you sort of tie your value to your worth ethic. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. So Do you feel like less than if you don't have anything to amount to? Yeah, if I don't have anything to amount to. Like if, and alhamdulillah, obviously if you remove Dean from obviously because I'm not depressed or nothing like that. You know what I mean? But it's, it's like... Right if you are, doesn't it? Yeah. That's not <laughs> all right. I, I get you. Some, sometimes like your goals, it might take a year to achieve it. So it's like the filler period until you get yeah. there. And then next year, it could be like, for example, your goal was save 10K, get your dream body or whatever. It's like, you might achieve them all in Feb, Fact. but this year was the filler year mm -hmm. where you just have to put in the work and you don't get that accomplishment. Yeah. And then next year might be it. If yeah. you want to memorize a juice, you're like, okay, I've got five pages left. Next year you complete it. You learn a but lot more about yourself in the quiet times. That's you just, yeah. yeah. You know, they have a saying, yeah, music is the silence between the keys. Mm. Put that down, bro. Who's they? Mm. Yeah, they, 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 <laughs> they, they say. Them. Mm. But um, that, like, honestly, like, I don't, I'm not a quiet guy. But I keep quoting Cause feet, yeah. Yeah. You quote more than anyone you else in this podcast. No, 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 relax. Uh, yeah. Maybe yeah, last more, year. Yeah, I'm rush more quotes. Uh, last <laughs> year, maybe. Man, not anymore. No, I'm not going to lie. Ashraf, you killed him this year. You beat him this year in, in quotes? quotes. Yeah, quotes, you killed him. Like, you're Mount Rushmore number nah, one. No, I mean, last year. Like, this, 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 this year, I've dropped it. I've dropped it. 
Maybe your standard, he, but you're still yeah, true, true, true. But you but know that you have differences in your true. your quoting ability. Mm. No, you know, <laughs> like like Susi is like he says, "I heard." Do you get what I mean? And then bang. Do you get what I mean? But yours is they say. He just said they say. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but it doesn't sound the same. Okay, okay. <laughs> but anyway, go back to the thingy. Um, Let's get music. I was going to say anyway, regardless though, the, the good thing about it is that period of growth and also perspective as well, you know, because like you have to be a bit grateful. Like the amount of times I've heard not people saying this to me, um, but like, oh, you traveled a lot this year. You know what I mean? But it looks like I traveled a lot. You know, but those things I took trivially, you know what I mean? I didn't look at it and be like, oh, that was like a big thing. You know, but to go on a trip with the boys, you know, and then after to go basically almost two months and like do things that I probably would have never done if I was continually studying or working all that kind of stuff. It's like... It's like two months overseas technically for you. Yeah, 60 bro. Days. The majority of that time was Hectic. like, you know what I mean? With different group of people and all that kind of stuff. So it's like, bless you, man. Alhamdulillah. You know what I mean? Same for you, Ali. Where does it rank? Let's, let's go with yours. You dabbled in yours first. Mm -hmm. I, I said most of it. What, did I miss anything? Like, No, because it was like, it's a, it's a big... <laughs> I know. Well, well, yeah, well, you're right. Because like, no, <laughs> you... We want to continue, like at least continue right. go more detail of yours because yours was a big deal. First like year being married, first one you like just hit your anniversary. One yeah. year done. You, yeah. you actually officially like moved out in your own place. By the way, doesn't matter how far it is, but like expensive, man. <laughs> when we went to his crib the other day, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of thought about marriage a little bit. I'm not how an MSA nice lad, huh? How nice N is his place? It's cozy, yeah, I'm bad, but it's just the idea that like, yeah, you get ideas, yeah. Like <laughs> you forget, like respectfully, by the way, yeah, I'm bad, yeah, yeah. But like, like obviously, like I've known Ashraf for a bit of time now, yeah. And then after you forget that this guy is now like a man. It's like your little brother. You ever look at? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. By the way, I'm saying this in a good way. Like, yeah. bro, that gave me motivation. Allah am Seeing I'm you're one of your boys. Too, like, don't laugh. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Don't. No, I mean like you see one of your boys. You know what I mean? Go from like from uh, like a boy. Do you get him to a man? You know what I mean? I remember we yeah. used to take the High piss school. at each other. Whatever real days and that and all that kind of stuff. To now he's like he's got a furnished crib and then after Allah Mubarak like he's established you know it's what I mean? It's a different level. Yeah, it's, it's like a different level. You literally you know have I mean? a, you know his own personal space. Yeah. He does things at his own accord. It's like, bro, why are you laughing? <laughs> bro, play, bro. Yeah. Keep going, bro. Okay. Don't me. Um, and then yeah, I looked at that and I was like, I didn't say I wanted to get married, but I was like, Allah Mubarak, that's something like nice to see. And plus, especially when it's one of your best mates, like that's doing that. It's like, of course, you, you got love for it. You know what mm. I mean? So this Absolutely. has been definitely big year, a big year. Big year, big year. Yeah. Lots, lots of things. Uh, I need to probably do a proper reflection. But sometimes <laughs> you look at it. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. See, like, you know, because no one says it. No, but you know why? Because it links back to what I said. These two are the only two that do reflections. Yeah, so I'll, just I'll journal. Yeah. I write my goals and stuff. Because I have to look at them like, okay, where did I, um, you know, fall short this year? Mm -hmm. And today's December 15. Um, so hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'll do that. What sorry. were your goals? Don't mind spins. Um, glimpse. By the way, it's the 14th. So it's 14th? Okay. Um, one day ahead, cuz that's how you have to be. Time's <laughs> fake. <laughs> <laughs> what is time? Okay. You got um, rid of one of the days. <laughs> what did I have? And mm. you also traveled most out of anyone in this group as well. Did you do that travel this year? Well, yeah, I did the whole, jan, whole jan. So yeah, came back Feb that's, 10. That's huge as well, man. I, I came back a week before my walima. There you go. Yeah. yeah Feb 9. Like, as in travel, traveling, like honeymoon. Yeah. Umrah, and, and Palestine, yeah. Turkey, all that. Because I went to Turkey Jan 1st. That was the first day. Southeast Asia twice. Yeah, Philippines, Thailand, new countries. All yeah, the new yeah. countries. That was nice. Um, I had some personal goals, like memorizing Quran and stuff like that. And I didn't hit it. But I was actually proud of how close I got. There's still two more weeks. I can do as much as I can. But looking at the last couple of years, not memorizing anything, I was proud of what I did this year. So that was really good because even if you don't achieve it, you're progressing there. And you look at it like, okay, next year, you know, I could be a bit more realistic. There was a lot going on when you get married. Like you have to start to learn to handle, you know, like it was even hard getting a place. I got married in uh, Nikah was November 15. Traveled from... December 20 to Feb 10 and then it took me a month and a half until I got my place so I was living at my grandma's place and stuff like that it was then you get a place at Ramadan it was a bit hard getting into that good routine um, but when I did I think I, I did well but really the goals religious it was fitness goals there was personal habits I wanted to do like I wanted to start a fading convention which we did with the workouts we've been doing that we've done five sessions which means we did it for five months that was one of the goals. One thing was extra content. We, did, we made the Fadi video, which was obviously good. 
We obviously wanted to do more, but that's definitely a highlight from the year. Yeah, it's it's progression, and that's the thing. Obviously, things when you write your goals, you overreaching like damn. Like obviously, I could do one a month. That's not that hard. But life, you know. So you, I, I worked towards it, and I was proud of that. So, alhamdulillah, next year, smash it out. Bigger and better, yeah. So this this year is like ranks pretty high then. If yeah, eventful, eventful year. Eventful. Uh, personal development. Learned a lot, like getting married, learning more about like marriage, uh, relationship stuff. But I felt like my personal development wasn't as the speed wasn't uh, this, uh, projecting the same as it has the last couple of years. Yeah, but progress you isn't know? always linear, bro. That's the thing, yeah. To be honest with you, sometimes you assume it is. Why is she pointing at me laughing, bro? <laughs> Continue, that was a clip. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> the clip's gone now. <laughs> I'll say it again. <coughs> you see, progress isn't always linear. <laughs> sometimes you got to take two steps back and just like reflect like you do. And then you go, okay, there's a better way to do things. That's why I feel like if I do, if I do something like that at the end of the year, um, it's a lot worse. It's a lot harder for me to actually implement that stuff because I'll forget it by the end of the mm-hmm. year and there'll be another problem or another issue yeah. I actually want to reflect and then capitalize on. Mm-hmm. So it's better for me in the moment to actually go, okay, I need to stop yelling. I need to stop doing A, B, and C. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I need to cool it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Bro, well, sometimes, and, and, and it's all about how you frame things, yeah? Because mm-hmm. for me, instead of saying, I need to stop getting angry, I just say, bro, just give up. Facts. For me, that goes uh, that that goes a longer way. That works. That works. That like in my mindset, it goes a longer way than for me to go. I need to become a lot more conscious of how I, of my emotions and and how I do th- like that kind of is like uh, I'm like bro, like just give up. Who cares? Keep it simple, man. You know, yeah. those are hard to judge there because I've wrote those in my goals. Like example, like give us an example. He yeah. always sells the angry one. Yeah. By the I'll way, I'll say. By the way, Seuss is not an angry guy all the time. Just so, like, for the guys that are listening, just to these one two clips, trust me, he's not angry all the time. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> for me, one thing that I wrote consistently was like, um, with, because sometimes people see me as the jokester. You know, like I crack a lot of jokes and it's time to take the piss like when I'm with the boys and stuff. So a big thing was just trying to change that narrative. Like, don't crack too many jokes. I like, try to be serious and stuff like that. And then sometimes it's hard to judge that. It's like, has that really changed? You know? And that's where it's probably best to get analysis from other people. Like, for example, you say, oh, I might still get angry a lot. And then you ask Welly, you go, I don't think so. How's it been angry all year? But mm. normally you might say once a year, once every 18 months, where it's like, nah, you've been pretty good. And that's where like external um, analysis might be best. It's hard internally. Because yeah. you start worrying about that one moment two months ago where you cracked too many jokes. Mm. And that's for me, that was a big thing. This is something that I do remember from the SMWC episode. <laughs> we need to be smart enough to read between the lines when it comes to our community. Yeah? Like Muhammad Salah can't say outright, bro, what he's doing in Gaza is terrible. Like you guys need to stop doing what you're doing. He can't do that because he's got sanctions on him based off of the clubs that he plays for and based off of the obviously the associations and the people that are paying him his checks. Obviously, Al Ghazi is a good example of somebody who didn't care, but he suffered the consequences. And there is double standards, whether we like it or not. There's hella double standards, bro. And um, I think that the, the problem is for us as Muslims, we're too reactionary, we're too emotional. We need to be a little bit more. And this is probably yes, Muslim is going to smoke me for this. I know that, mm. <laughs> but we need to be a lot less emotional and 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 grow thicker skin and build our own. And, and be able to kind of like pick our battles where need be and not be stupid and, and emotional and overreact and so on and so forth. But yeah, look, look they're going to smoke me in the comments, man. <laughs> that's for sure, bro. But that's how I feel. I genuinely feel that moving into 2024, I'm going to pick my battles a lot better. There's, <laughs> there's, uh, there's some goal setting. Yeah, there's some goal yeah. setting. So, so it's, yeah, for me, it's like pick your battles a lot better. Be smart about how you converse with people what you say what you and what you don't say is very important too yeah what you don't say is extremely important tells you a lot or tells people a lot about who you are because you don't allow or you don't eat into all the bullshit that's around you yeah so yeah that's pretty much oh and i'm sorry for the rant boys Mm. (laughs) that's it well like yeah that was very beneficial (laughs) honestly Uh, maybe wait you running off yeah, I'm like a before dog. You, Why'd you turn the aircon, bro? But, but yeah, <laughs> hey, before you run off, yeah, because I want to touch on to Ali's bit real quick. 
But I want to say one another thing that we've like upped our game in like fair income this year is we've added an addition to the team. You know, I don't know if people. Was last year. Got so again, Rissa was last year. I'm talking ah. about Najim this year. <laughs> <laughs> we've added Najim onto the team. I think we'll probably blur his name if he wants, doesn't want to mention or something like that. But regardless, if you guys have seen our thumbnails have gone up another level. So if you guys appreciate it, um, give this video a like, you know. And amongst us boys, I think we should give it a round of applause already. Are we clapping for the gym or for ourselves? <laughs> the gym. Let's <laughs> make it clear. For bro. our hiring skills. Yeah. <laughs> I'm clapping for myself. Clap for the gym. But yeah, nah. AO Agency. On, is that, is that, the, is that yeah. the guy? AO Agency. We're his agency. So whatever you guys... We get, get a, a percentage. Yeah, percentage. No, he signs <laughs> it. <laughs> no, we're just playing. We're just playing. But yeah, boys. Apologies for dead in the conversation. No, no, <laughs> no. no, 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 no good, we'll good, see, good. In, we'll see you next week, inshallah. I'm going to head out. Wait, right, just, just, just. Get, just I'm get out. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. Yeah, I wanted to hear Ali's Let's side of things. Yeah, yeah, banger. No, but it's a sting, man. Yeah. Just, yeah. So what were you saying, Willie? Um, I now wanted to know about you because obviously we sp we, talk, we spoke about ourselves a little bit. Okay. Like when you look back at your year and when mm -hmm. you compare it to the years that you've had, um, how would you rank it amongst other years? Or do you even do that? Do you rank it amongst other years? I've never done that before. I I've never even heard someone do that until you mentioned it. Um, I remember on the chat. And I actually, I actually like it to an extent because you think about um, in terms of because at the end of the day, you kind of know what you want to focus on more, whether it's personal development, whether it's fitness, all these kind of things, or professional. And I, w I, w I would like to see, you know, compared to other years, how much I've improved this year. Mm -hmm. And for me personally, this year, it's a huge year. Arguably one of the... Accomplishments-wise? Yeah, like one or two, like really accomplishment-wise. And even just like how it's much good. has like changed. Obviously, you can't, like for me, comparing it to post-COVID, that's like... No, two COVID years, it's like a different realm because mm -hmm. it's off different criteria. But for me, I started the year of traveling, the second part. And that was more of s staying in the one city fully and like studying a language and really trying to immerse myself in that culture. I'm not sure. Did you did you come visit me that side, that time? Or yeah, was it did. I, was, Jan. I was with Spain with you for like five days. No, but I was saying, was it January? Was yeah, it? Jan, Jan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It was, yeah, so it was, it was end of January. I remember. Yeah, it was part of that. January 24th. Yeah, so you were part of that at the start of the year. We linked up in Granada. Because f the first part of the trip was more traveling, finding out which cities I like, this and that. But then when I did come back in January, oh wait, th let me go back. Before this actually, I went to, w which was a big deal for me, yeah? going And a good big memory for me is going to my friend's wedding in Singapore. And that's like, this is just in terms of memories, like, you know, strengthening your connections with like long friendships as well so i would say that's one thing part of the trip that and learning a language in itself in terms of self-development what i've wanted to do that was a big deal for me and taking that leap of faith obviously a bit of a financial risk as well to an extent so that was a big deal so spain there was graduating university taking a four years or so to uh, finally graduate and actually that's a big accomplishment um move, yeah exactly moving into another the round of field. applause Thanks, uh, do I clap as well? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're not allowed to <laughs> and then obviously from that i straight away got into working and honestly the job i have right now is, i didn't know i would love it this much but it's probably a job I'll, i can keep for a while mm -hmm. like five plus years or who knows because it's it's not only the content I'm doing, so like teaching English, it's more of like what I've wanted to do is like helping people in their journeys, language learning journeys from what I experienced in January. So I kind of saw as a student how it works, you know, content, immersing yourself in culture, mm. learning a lot about yourself at the same time and then now being in the teacher side where it's like the language is an issue for, for me, obviously, because it's my country, mm -hmm. but helping them in their journey and kind of like a service to other people, that kind of thing was a big deal and also even my self-development in terms of public speaking, whereas like obviously the podcast helps, but then taking the classroom yourself, you being the main guy, you know, the teacher, running the classroom, running the conversations with students. Obviously, it's something I was going to do because I studied, but actually doing it and seeing yourself improve and think, damn, man, like 
mm. how far I've, I've come like seeing like i because it's so hard to think like i'm eventually going to get to that side but once it comes it's like man like all the steps you take just to get here as well and sometimes you can even be impressed about like the certain level you get to and obviously it's still the start of my journey I c- i'm n- probably not the best teacher compared to in the future inshallah but that's a big deal do you want to become like uh like a coach carter <laughs> <laughs> i don't know, I think i have that in me bro yeah 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 no but like it's more yeah it's more of just like s- saying something saying i'm going to do this and actually doing it and actually taking the action and also so that was a big deal so job as well working you know trying changing your lifestyle i'll say the thailand trip as well thailand trip has got to be like for all of us massive, for sure man yeah, massive highlight for that year like taking a boys trip and out try, of the group chat st- yeah out of the group chat alhamdulillah man. Esta una. Esta una. oh that gets Star bleeped out because right? that word is just stays in the group chat because also like part of that trip obviously like we said in the other episode like trying a new sport trying something that you know oh, is not yeah. is not familiar to me hard. 75 hard even <laughs> like that was a that's a joke man yeah <laughs> what he whispered it like the mic didn't <laughs> yeah. hear him bro <laughs> he's giving you alley <laughs> but that's the thing like <laughs> even this 75 thing. <laughs> <laughs> even this 70 hard challenge yeah oh. i didn't oh. know i was gonna even do it yeah i remember hearing about it oh it's mm-hmm. like oh you know so how did it last year it sounds all right, but would I ever come across and actually make the time for it? Did he finish it? So how? Yeah. Yeah, I remember he finished it. Oh, sure, yeah. It made a big difference. And honestly, uh, I, I think he said he wants to do just it Just so I know, am I getting credit on the podcast for s- making you start 75 hard? Or Is nah? it you or your wife? I'll uh, pass on the credit. <laughs> 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 yeah, but partly Ashraf as well, yeah. So that, like, exactly what I was looking for in terms of, you know, finding what you want to work on personally and how, what is actually going to help you work on that specific mm. trait, whatever it is. So for me, it was consistency. I felt like I have the information. I've consumed podcasts. I've consumed like books where I, I kind of know, I have a good foundation, I feel, where it's like now, okay, implementation. I need to actually do things. I need to make things happen. And the consistency part is obviously easier said than done. And that's something I need to work on. And 75 hard, right, as of now, day 60. Can I ask a question, bro? Yeah. yeah. You're day 60 now, yeah? Yeah. What have you learned from the 75 hard or the, from the last 60 days? 60. Like, honestly speaking. Or have you learned like, from 60 hard? Like, because I'm at a position. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a diss, bro. You oh, wow. You You're on 60, days. bro. Relax. Like, you do 60 days. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> that why I ask this question is, yeah? Because obviously like i'm off that like whole like personal like development stuff like i'm not off it <laughs> since when <laughs> sounds bro? bad oh. yeah. sounds bad yeah so, you know that's interested in it yeah, yeah like if <laughs> i'm off the challenges you've had enough of the challenge groups no yeah the challenges got a bit <laughs> dragged it, started it did drag by last year when we did it yeah no i think it dragged even more this year no no and i say, it sounds like i'm saying it with negative connotation the challenges like are amazing and all that kind of stuff but obviously like my type of year whatever bang yeah. okay um but like and obviously, there's probably people that share like a sentiment, the same sentiment that I do. They go to me like, why is this guy like doing two workouts a day? What's he doing? You, like even Briss and I had this conversation the other day. Okay, cool. You get to the 75 hard. You finish this day 75. But how much of those habits that you gained over 75 days do you actually like retain? Do you get what I mean? So 60 days into it right now, like other than the 60 clips that you've made for content, do you get what I mean? Um, other than going to like the gym, what is like some lessons you learn from it? Who knows, someone might be listening to this and being like, I've never heard actually Ali speak about like 75 hard And challenge. then day one of Jan, they might start it to start the new year. Yeah. Look, I'll say one thing. For me personally, um, in terms of the fitness goals I had, I've wanted to f- kind of figure out the type of fitness, like lifestyle I wanted and like, you know, pri- what I want to prioritize. Because for me, s- soccer was a s- my sport. I was playing for a team, but then it's like, after stopping that because obviously commitment wise it's not for me right now Mm -hmm. and for me i've been trying to figure out what's best for me in my fitness journey and i've come across like one of the things was like one of the people that has has inspired us or something this year nick bear so for me like hyper athlete lifestyle is actually i wouldn't say ideal but it's inspiring it's something that he's setting the standard and showing that it's possible basically like being able to run very often like i would say f- at least four times a week 
even running marathons at the same time, lifting heavy and even holding like a strong amount of mass. And that kind of thing where it's like two workouts a day in 75 hard, that's exactly what this lifestyle is that I've w- I want I wanted. And I've been saying like, this is the lifestyle I want. Now it's given me no excuse to actually implement it because it's like, these are the rules for the challenge. This is perfect. Now I just got to do it. Obviously not mm. easy, but like, yeah. The print is there The blueprint is there Sometimes people do challenges Where they push themselves For a certain period And it's just for that Like mm-hmm. for example In Ramadan We do a, like a juz a day If you want to do a khatam Most people don't continue that But just for Ramadan It's what you do Do you find 75 hard That's one dead ringtone That's mine oh, okay. Yours? Is it TikTok <laughs> For the 75 hard yeah. challenge yeah. Bring it here I'll do it later I'll do it later Yeah I was just going to ask yeah, show it on camera. Show it on camera. Show, show them on camera. This guy, he, he doesn't just talk the talk. He walks the walk. The, it, what's that say? 75 had disc. What's that say? What? <laughs> <laughs> 75 hard I, I talk. Ca- I can't read it properly. What 70, is it? 75 hard talk. Hard talk, yeah. I don't gotcha. know why I wrote that, but yeah. Alhamdulillah. So. I was just going to ask, do you find for you 75 hard, the habit sustainable? Like after the challenge, could you do, like Legendary said, would you be able to maintain most of them? Or is it just 75 days, khalas after, alhamdulillah, feed up? And what would you reta- uh, retain? I th- look, I think for, alhamdulillah, for my routine in terms of my job hours and that, I think it is. Because I only work until about like 1.30. So I can make the time for these things. But a 9 to 5, I don't think it's really mm. possible. Because you're so, what I've noticed one thing as well, like social life is kind of on pause. Or at least minimum, where it's like, see the guys on the podcast, my mates are futsal once a week and that's it. So it's kind of at a minimum, which is fine because it's a challenge, that's the whole point. But in terms of lifestyle, it can get tough because, like I said, you're saying no to so many things, even you know, sp- spending time with family, going out for dinner. I, w- I would say you can maybe do, because there's double sessions, yeah? Double sessions are long. I would say maybe half of it, doing double sessions like th- three times a week. Because even that in itself, you're doing three times a week and then the other three, you're still working out. That's a lot in itself. But then it's more realistic because you're not missing out on your social life because that can, that can be a big deal as well if you're pausing your social life and you know, you're not seeing people that is also important to you. When you look at the challenge, is it really just the workout? Is everything else, water, reading, body pick, just that? Because like, eventually it becomes a normal thing like reading 10 pages, it's not that deep and taking a body pick, drinking water yeah. and eating. Is the t- when you think of the challenge, do you mainly just think of the workouts? I think mo- mainly the workouts and the reading. Yeah. And for me, I remember at the start, I can't re- like I think at before seventy five I had obviously the travel, but even before that, um, I wasn't reading much, and I c- and I was in a stage where it's like, why not reading? Like I, I'm gonna make the time for this, like for reading at this time. But then you keep procrastinating. You haven't found that book that's interested you. And think about it right now, like the challenge has actually helped me with the reading so much, even if it's only 10 pages. Mm. Because of course, there'll be days where you read the 10 pages, like, okay, I actually want to, uh, obviously I want to see the next chapter. What's it, what's it going to say, this and that? You keep reading because that's a minimum. So for me, it's been a huge in terms of reading. Um, and even just realizing that you can still learn a lot in 10 pages. Because in the past, I don't know about you guys, but when we did other challenges or reading in general, I feel like I had to read at least a lot or a fair amount. Just so people know, the last challenge was uh, 40 minutes of reading a non-fiction book a day. Was it that long? Yeah, it was 40 minutes of reading. Yeah. Or 40 That's pages. Mental, something. Yeah, something like that. Long. No, no, it was minutes. Would minutes. you do it again? Yeah. Would you do it again? Minutes. What, 75 hard? Yeah. But I've had days where I think to myself, that feeling I have after 75 hard, how's my routine going to be? Is it going to drop or is it going to lift? Because... Like it's easy for me to say right now, yeah, I'm good. Like well, you still I got another fifteen days. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, like even just because it's coming towards the end, obviously you start to think about because it's been two months. Like two months is a long time in terms of habits. Mm-hmm. You think about how's your routine going to be post post challenge. Like it's mm-hmm. going to be a shock where it's like, well, when do I work out? What do I do now? Mm. Like all this freedom sometimes isn't good for you. So, in would I do it again? Not maybe not this challenge, but maybe something similar. Because for me, the <laughs> what loves the challenge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, you, did you achieve the goals you, you wanted? Up, like yeah. when you looked when you started, that you said, "Hey, seventy-five. I know you're on day sixty, and we probably 
might touch on it when we do the um, goal setting app soon or like going into the new year. But did you achieve what you thought? Besides the systems, like physical change, something else, strength. Yeah, physical change. I'll say composi- composition a bit. I don't know. You guys can probably say more than me because you know, if you're taking a progress photo every day, you can't see much of a difference. Mm. So, um, yeah, I'll say I, I have seen a, a fair bit, but then it's mostly the systems, right? It's kind of making the most of your day. And for me, the earlier you do it, the better in terms of w- the workouts and just feeling control of your day, getting your getting the stuff you want out. And that's what I was looking for as well. Consistency and the systems. Mm. So this challenge is more so to like, yeah, like get into it, get whatever benefits you can get out of it and then just move on. Like it's not something that you would like be, sh- you'd keep to the T later on in life. No. So th- that's, yeah. th- that's the whole point of the program. So that's mm. why the workouts, he doesn't say what type of workout. Yeah, he just says doing it. Mm-hmm. And he also the diet. He says follow a diet. That is so general. Which is good, but then it's the whole point is just sticking to that one thing you said for 75 days, more than two months, and then the habits kind solidified. When you, so when you finish the 75 days, because people want to see a progress picture, and I know obviously you're not going to show your old and stuff like that. No, but are Boring. You go- <laughs> yeah, true. Are you going to show something like in a tight top or something where you're like, in 75 days, I've gotten from like the vascular change or the fit on my top or... Something like some people do like the pants thing, where they, yeah, uh, they show the pants. The and pants they're like, thing. Oh, as in the like the, uh, like, I, I used to fit into these pants. Look at this. Or oh, this top used to look like this on me. Because it's not I the biggest loser, bro. <laughs> 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 no, but everyone wants to see a change. Yeah, what, yeah. Or if I look at day one and day seventy-five and the guy looks the same, I'll be like, bro, axe this challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Yeah, the guy's going me. seventy-five days of gym, mm-hmm. no, and you look, look the same. But man, I'm not doing that. It's a good point. But like, to be honest, getting into this content creation idea, part of the challenge. I didn't know what I was signing up for. I was just like, I want to post videos for the sake of like, not caring what people think. So this type of thing, I didn't even think about. I was mm. just thinking, mm. let's be consistent with every day. Like, I, was, I think I even told you earlier today, the idea of posting, obviously, no one, no one even brought it up. I just thought about it in my head. Because like, you, if you had the idea, then that's where it would probably generate. But I just thought, okay, it's a, it's a personal challenge. And I remember even thinking before that, like doubting myself before I even started like thinking how I'm going to do 75 days of videos like recording myself like it's it's pretty crazy like obviously well to, to me I think like I've simplified the videos of only doing a few and then just cutting and whatever then you guys saying my edits are good but then I'm not see, I'm not seeing much like I'm not thinking much of these videos and that's where you start to think about like something you're good at but you don't realize until someone says it or like you're actually decent at. Mm. And that's why I like, I, re- I really like, I'll say it's a proud moment of actually po- doing something that I've said, another thing this year. That's where it makes the year like kind of up there for me, doing another thing that I said that I was going to do. Mm-hmm. Inshallah, I, w- I will finish. So it's more of just, yeah. Pers- Th- it's that a was actually good. Thing. That was going to be my next question. Like if you look back at this year and said, what was one thing you've accomplished? What would that be? Would you say it's a 75 hard for you? All similar because I haven't accomplished it yet. So, okay, yeah, true. Uh, days. Two weeks. So, so then, if it's not seventy-five hard, can you give me something else? Then? <laughs> <laughs> it's <Okay>. boring. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about now? Yeah, um, is it the Goggins challenge if you complete it? That's nuts. Yeah, that would be for sure. Shall we do it? Um, if you want to think about a girl, Ashraf, if you have one, what do you need to think about it? Too? Um, for me, it's probably just the one year married. Like, cause a lot of people say, if you can survive the first year, you can survive it all. And then, on my anniversary, I think I was on the phone to you. Like mm-hmm. you called me, and I'm like, damn, like this is one year. Yeah. And then me analyzing my relationship, it's like I'm grateful. Like you can look at it and be like, okay, you know, do we suit? Do we fit? Do we have similar goals? This kind of thing. I looked at it and I said, alhamdulillah, like the first year, like there wasn't a stage where I wanted, to, yeah. you know, like know get in a fight or something. There was yeah. no fight or anything like that. So alhamdulillah, I was just happy. And th- that's that's a big that's the biggest accomplishment I could ask for because I just I'm confident in the future. Yeah, you know that kind of thing. Like, alhamdulillah, I went on holidays. You know, we, you know, she graduated uni. We got a house or we're renting a place. It's all these nice things, but that is the probably one of the a best l- things. A lot of people say, well, and it's said to the Goggins challenge, then that tops it. Well, like, give me Whoa. something that's not a challenge, <laughs> please. I've got to go crazy. <laughs> I need a synonym for that. <laughs> hey, Gali. Um, actually, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you a different one then. You know, yeah. 
the live show for me, personally. Yeah. Where because I remember speaking to Jim about it and just feeling like the nerves. Mm-hmm. Because of course it's one thing for us to talk here, you know, on a couch with the boys, like it's not too bad. But then, you know, it's live. Everything you say in the moment, you can't edit out. You can't like. People are gonna hear it. You can't hide basically. And people, are, there's like a lot of people that a fair bit of people watched it as well, which is obviously could turn out. But then it's like that's where the pressure comes in. <laughs> yeah, about two hundred yeah. yeah. plus. Yeah. So that's that's where obviously natural pressure comes in. But I'll say a proud moment because I've always thought about it with this podcast. And inshallah, we do in the future, doing events or whatever it is, and that's obviously public speaking. So that kind of thing, it's like actually getting it done and having it um, under your belt. It's like, okay, this is, I've, d- I've done this already. It's just doing more and more and more to get better at the, at the craft. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. No worries. What about you? What about me? Memorable <laughs> moment. Iceland, number one. Bang. I'm going to keep it short, simple. Iceland, number one, nearly dying is that there. Is that with... The, what, is that with... Was that with... <laughs> 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 no, no, that was not with... <laughs> that was... I don't lie about we haven't travelled to the world. <laughs> um, no, I can't bait him out like that. <laughs> Ahmed, Ahmed, if you're listening to this part of the episode, just bleep out the name that I said. Um, uh, so yeah, travelling to Iceland was another one. Because I remember, um, I think I said it on that Iceland episode, when I look back at it, I said to myself at one point, I said, right, this is actually crazy. I think I, when I went back to Birmingham, yeah, I deeped because I was like all alone on the other side of the world. I was like, it's actually crazy that I went from one side of the world where people low-key think that doesn't exist to go on to the other side of the world, you know what I mean, and like all alone and whatnot. It's just like, I don't know, I feel like it's just a country that like no one ever just says to like, I'm going to. You can always say you went to Thailand. You can always say you go to Turkey and all that kind of stuff, but you got to make it's quite really Was it a bucket list country for you, like for it's life? a bucket list for country us, and yeah. a country that it's still on the bucket list. And that doesn't make sense, does it? No. Like As in maybe other states or cities or areas of it, that's why. No, it's the, just I'll go back go to the same place. <laughs> that bucket list works, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you tick it off. It's <laughs> not too bro, but this bucket list works a bit different. Okay. This bucket list works different, I'm telling you. I would go back there, but maybe obviously in a different setting. Um, then having a routine, because obviously after coming back from trouble and then being like feeling, having the feelings like being burnt out from like doing your masters for like the last two years. Um, it was hard to get back into like a low key like routine, you know what I mean? And I think this is where the anti challenges and the anti all of this like yeah, stuff came enough, from, yeah. you know what I mean? It was just like, oh, let me just have a bit of like. Rah- we didn't like do any challenges this year, did we? Like besides well, that seventy five hard, I didn't. Yeah. Besides seventy five hard, seventy five hard. Like yeah. N- yeah. But even just around that, like that idea, that concept, and all that kind of stuff. It's like it's not every day like wake up and rah rah rah. You know what I mean? Sometimes like. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like acts first of development. That's what you said. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm get not, that quote. It's not I'm for not, me. I'm not. Yeah. But it's funny because. The personal development is the thing that led me to one of our biggest highlights this year, which was the martial arts. You know what I mean? Doing BJJ is probably one of the best things that happened. And it's not just because of the martial arts itself. It's just because of, like, the enjoyment I found from, like, the routine. You know what I mean? In that, like, I sort of found, like, I got my love back for, like, I had a reason to now get stronger. Do you get what I mean? Like, I had a reason now to, like, everything wasn't just, like, to look aesthetically pleasing. It was more, like, from a fitness point of perspective and whatnot. Um, but then also that came with other benefits like I started sleeping earlier you know what I mean because I knew that now like if I, d- if I go to training and I don't sleep on time then the next morning I'm going to suffer and that has like a constant like, like mm-hmm. battle effect you know what I mean um, and then yeah so those th- I'd say that martial arts and having that luxury of travelling because I didn't appreciate that travel till like later on like when I ba- went back on it you know what I mean having to go to Umrah having to go to Iceland having to go connect with family that's probably been that was probably the highlight of the travel as well, you know, other than Iceland, connecting with family that's like on the other side of the world. Do you get what I mean? And that taught me one other thing this year. And this is when that conversation with Sam sort of happened the other day where it's like, I was trying really hard to like reflect what did this year like happen, you know what I mean? And family was a big one, you know, because when I went to Birmingham one day, I remember, I think I said, I might have told you guys this, but I was like brushing my teeth and I'm in like Birmingham, it's a cold morning, whatever. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, it's actually crazy. If my mom never connect, kept her connection with, her like family then i wouldn't have known of a family in birmingham do you get what i mean and obviously like here in australia you have like the individualistic mindset where it's like okay cool do your own thing get to the next thing maybe you and your family or whatever but then when you get married isolate from your friends do you get what i mean but it's like the idea of having like small little pockets of community because i wouldn't have gone to birmingham and had that time so now when i came back it's like 
I got to put time and effort into the things that are like more meaningful, like friends, family. Mm-hmm. Well, and I sound so cliche because I like I tried, but like you know what I mean. But little things like that, it's the little lessons that you learned that like overall in the year that like that. makes an impact. But um, I wanted to like transition to like other couple like bang 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 things, yeah. Okay. Because we want to go eat after leaving an hour to get back. Yeah, <laughs> you love a leave. Anyway, um, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm not Seuss fair. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, a couple of things. All right, what have you been your best purchases of this year? Curious to know. There's a random this question, one, yeah. but would have been some big good purchases. N- not, I'm not. We spoke about investments enough on the trip. For me, it was the iPad. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think, alhamdulillah, like. Uh, can I can I get a bit of? What's, what's can funny? I get a bit of? What do you think? Yeah, the group chat. The, group <laughs> chat. <laughs> the iPad selfie. Oh, no, no, that no. is bad. That is bad. Okay, I'll make can sh- I get credit for sh- that? Sh- should I tell the story or not? Nah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what you want credit for that? I want credit for the iPad. Please give me credit. Oh yeah, for the iPad. iPad. They're buying the iPad. Hundred yeah, yeah, yeah. percent. I thought you meant the pick. No. So no, no. the boys, alhamdulillah, we had some goals a couple months ago about you know I, when the gym joined the group. As you guys know, I told them there's a standard in the group that we want to start um, having between us. Can I, I can say it, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Keep, keep, keep that. Keep okay, that keep idea. that. Okay, I just said standard. So you got, you, you got to be healthy. You know, everyone can have their own personal goals depending on what they want. So we started the thing once a month where we send body pics in the group. So you can see that kind of progress. And when I, when I was in the Philippines recently and I got my phone water damaged, as you boys know, so I didn't have a phone for like 10 days. <laughs> and I was just messaging the Instagram chat. And it was the day of the month for a body pic. So I took the body pic with my iPad <laughs> and the boys were dying, <laughs> man. It was the funniest. But I just like it as a memory that right, that body pic. Um, is Cause I checked in on Instagram. I said to you, "Bro, how are you going?" And you're like, "Yeah, bro, my phone's wet. It's gone. I have no phone." Then I'm seeing this guy keep messaging me back to back, and I'm like, "What happened to the phone?" I'm like, "I'm thinking you're messaging on your wife's Instagram." Do you get what I mean? And then you know when I realized you're using the iPad, you guys just imagine this: a grown man in shirtless. a mirror, shirtless. Yeah, we should sell the pic or something. <laughs> what? Alhamdulillah. But yeah, iPad. <laughs> Best investment I did. I had the I got the Mac like 2018 when I started university. Mm-hmm. Had it for many years, but uh, for me, what I wanted to do, the iPad just made things, you know, mm-hmm. and even just the desire to get things organized on the iPad, like organize your life through the iPad. Mm-hmm. It's it's worked wonders. Obviously, I've only had it for I think less than six months, but alhamdulillah, I'm proud of the investment. I feel like that's you know, I think that was a good investment. A lot of other yeah. things were like the rest of my money. What I bought a phone. We invested on holidays. Rent is too expensive. Rent is an iPad a month. So and, don't, and don't deep it like iPad, $1,500. That's rent. rent each month. Rent is an iPad a month. Yeah. So I pretty much pay, an, uh, buy an iPad each month, but, but paying rent. Uh, yeah, That's yeah. what you guys are all saving by living so at home. So you're saying I can get an iPad thing. Yeah. You can get an iPad a month. <laughs> Cause that's, that's rent, yeah. $1,500. And these type of purchases now. like the iPad for you, I remember before you've been buying it, you weren't even sure. Cause it's like, it's a, it's a fair bit of money. It, like it takes a hit. But then these kind of things is the investments where it actually makes a big difference, man. Like people don't understand that. I remember when I bought the new iPhone because phone water damage cost five hundred dollars to fix. So I'm like, I'll buy the new iPhone. Three people that because I came straight from Philippines and bought a phone, borrowed money, but I still bought a phone. <laughs> and then everyone's like, "Damn, you got money and stuff." And I'm like, "This is rent each month." And the new yeah. iPhone is rent each month. People yeah. don't understand. It's like yeah. you guys literally have you know so much to save and stuff. It's not that you know. Good point. Uh, into the mic. Do you, um, ha- do you have a, a purchase? purchase of the year? Yeah. Oosh, the purchase of this year. Muay Thai shorts or something? TNs maybe. Um, you have TNs? Yeah. Oh. I just never wear them. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Best purchase that's st- <laughs> still a band new. Yeah, there's just certain shoes you just don't wear. It's like triple blacks. Um, but I, no, I don't have one to be honest on top of my head. You know, I'm trying to think of one really, really yeah. hard. It's you actually, know? it's not easy because it's not a thing you think of yeah. often. Like, oh, what did I buy that's actually made a big impact or did like a big difference? Did you get the new AirPods this year? Is that worth it? AirPods Pretty is one sure. of these things where... If you say it's the AirPods... No, no. <laughs> is that a bad thing? <laughs> yes. Yeah, like, why? Like... It's, ev- it's good for everyone. Everyone has an AirPod. Yeah. They're just the new ones. Like, aren't they expensive? Sure. I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't bought it yet, you know? Oh. I don't know that much money. Like. Yeah. So what do you wear at the gym? I have my old AirPods from like four years ago. Still 2018. Yeah, he's Same loyal. AirPods from 2018. I respect him, I respect him for that's that. Dead, bro. They need to get cleaned, but like. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. Now, honestly, I don't have, man. I know my best purchase, sorry. My you need to close it up? No, no. <laughs> someone else in the group. Someone else. 
So nah, my best, shout out to my that best purchase else. this year, it's the trouble. It has to be the trouble. Started off the yeah. year traveling. Do you get what I mean? Half of it, I didn't even know where the money was coming from, subhanAllah. Yeah, but it just like happened. So it has to be that, you know what I mean? That make I'm me, still suffering. Huh? Don't make me say the same answer, bro. Think of something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no, you're going to have to give me some time. Because honestly, we might have to come back to this. This is... Because I, 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 apart from the travel, because mm-hmm. it was a financial risk, I didn't buy much when I came back apart from... Yeah. A laptop, but then it's just like a necessity. That's why I'm in the same shoes as you, because like a lot of it is like recovering from the fire. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, it takes, exactly. It takes months to and we recover. Then we go to Thailand. It's like <laughs> yeah, it does make sense. It's but always yeah. On to the 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 next one. Um, away from purchases, what are some like things you've either watched, like a lecture series, maybe had a podcast that stood out to you that, stood you that you like been binging, or even a show? Do you get what I mean? This year that we've discovered. Yeah. yeah. For me, my favorite podcast was that Chris Williams and Alex Hormozzi. Yeah. That you guys know. I've listened to that like twice. Yeah. That just stood out to me. There's too many things. The amount of times I've tried to quote that, quote something from the episode and can't, is shocking. Yeah, I, need a, is. I need to rewatch it and just take notes or something. Mm. But that episode, I, I absolutely loved. That's Give a top three, actually. Give a top a three. A podcast? Yeah. Episode. Okay. That's 100%. Second one would be... The Sami Hamdi one you sent me yes. with, on the Thinking Muslim podcast because it's one of those podcasts where like both of them is like you don't want to stop listening to it. You know when you kind of listen to a podcast at the gym and the next day you kind of finish it? These podcasts are you listen and then on your drive and you go home and you stop what you're doing to listen to it. Like you just want to um, be engaged in it. And you forget about time. The third one Very rarely do you forget about time when you listen to podcasts. You know? Yeah, and that's one you're of the greatest it, feelings. You're doing it to fill in time, yeah. You know, Give me one second. It's almost I need like to have a quick that. look. I, if anyone hasn't watched that, you know what I mean? That's from our like, Muslim side of our audience. And if you're not Muslim, <laughs> this is for you. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely listen to it. You know what I mean? It gives you a different perspective because people would think, obviously, the whole, like, the, the, the situation with, um, what do you call it, Palestine, the genocide that's happening is a 2D conversation. You know what I mean? And there's so much at play. And obviously, as Muslims, sometimes we fall short into thinking, that, oh my God, it's because they're building another canal opposite to the Suez Canal. They're going, why is Saudi not doing this and all of that kind of stuff? Um, so it's like a very informative um, educational podcast, you know. And he has different series on him, you know. But while he's looking for his um, third one, you have one? Hard, bro, because the problem with like podcasts... Just do whatever comes to your mind straight away. I was just going to say, oh, the problem with podcasts here, when you listen to so many, it's like... On to the next, on to the next. Like, for me personally, I'm too quick to go to the next one and not actually let it marinate kind of thing where it's like, or oh, you know the third? Um, Chris Williamson and Nick Bear. That high? Yeah, the QR City. Mm. Really? Yeah, that, that one. City's yeah. power? Yeah, that one. That's the top three boys. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta be able to recall it, lads. Inshallah. Yeah, you took five minutes. Yeah, <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, what's yours? Go tell me. Even if a lecture series or something. My one, um, uh, top three. It has to be. I wouldn't say podcast, but it's going to sound so bad. But like I've f- like I've fallen in love with Joe Rog- Rogan's podcast all over again. But for like th- from different angles, you know. Um, there was one episode with, I forgot what his name is, the Asian dude that was in. Um, What's that show? What's that show? The number one show of this year. Come on, just come on, help me up. with Netflix. The guy that's the graffiti artist. Uh, beef. Beef. None what's of you guys the, know what's the number one show? Beef? Yeah. Oh, okay. You don't know it? Never heard of it. Yeah, I blame. Uh, Netflix, I uh, logged out because the IP address, so I can't go back in. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, yeah? They say you're not at the right location. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to log in on the laptop That's and so connect random. it with USB-C to HDMI. <laughs> and you think I'm joking? This guy's so random. Oh, you guys think I'm joking? Oh, this is this is life at home, Habib. You can't pay the bills. You gotta. You know, you know, I lo- you know, I love that you told that story because now <laughs> when people listen to this episode and they think of the iPad story. The iPad picture, <laughs> everything makes sense. <laughs> yeah, wallah. Okay, let's go top three. Let's end it here. And we'll go eat. Um, let's go. Uh, I should have found the name of the guy. So the Homozi episode was, um, it's called number one. Uh, obviously, the the Sami Hamdi one was another one. And then I would say all things Joe Rogan, like this year. I saw Joe Rogan from um, 
Joe Rogan and Lex Friedman. Yeah. They were my go-to guys for this year, I'd say. Um, I'll say good. Lex Freeman. None of I'm your what's sorry, what's your name? What's your guys mate's name? Man up guy. Man up. I was talking to her before. Which one? I feel like I'm the guy you discovered this year. Bedrus Bedrus Schoolian. Yeah, none of his podcasts? Oh he upset? Like I would say because the thing is there was no podcast that hit me like a truck this year, but there's mm. certain things I can take away. So for example, like the, the Asian guy that's on it, I can't believe I forgot his name. But it's the guy that loves L S D and psychedelics and We didn't even know the show, so we're not gonna Joe know the guy. He's from da- the Joe Reagan. David. Oh. Uh, David Cho. That's what his oh. name is. Yeah, David Cho. Sorry. That's what I said. He's the graffiti you, that's why I said you should know him. <laughs> In the world, yeah. Do you know this guy, yeah? Yeah, fun fact about him. In his early days, uh, you'd know this, Najim. In his early days, guess what ended up happening? Yeah? The wrong Asian guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I know, because there's other pictures. <laughs> this guy's getting cancelled. <laughs> Says David, no, let's the David Cho, Secret Service. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? But this is the, this is the guy. This is the guy. Oh this is the guy. Oh this guy here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that people are seeing this other side too. Uh, yeah. uh, but I was gonna say David Cho. He got he done like a graffiti mural painting for Facebook in the early days of Facebook. Yeah. You know how he got compensated with that? With stock shares in the company. His shares stocks are worth over like a billion dollars now. Like he's considered a billionaire just because of his stocks, wow. but um, and this also ties into why I also said the episode in a whole like wasn't like my favorite because you know sometimes where like for example Jordan Peterson he says certain things which you can take with a grain of salt take away from him do you get what I mean? It's the same thing with David Cho because of that billion dollars Loki when he speaks he's a bit out of touch with the reality, you know what I mean? But there's so many like he's a, like. He looks at life from an introspective angle. You know what I mean? He looks at things from like a deeper way. One thing that like I took away from that episode was the whole idea of, um, it's the most random, you have to listen to the episode, but he goes to Africa. When he goes to Africa at the age of 18, yeah? At the age of 18, he goes to uh, Africa just to sort of the typical white man, I'm trying to find myself. You know what I mean? Because he experienced Asian racism in wherever in America and all that kind of stuff, whatever, he goes to Africa and he goes and he's trying to find like this dinosaur that apparently existed. He saw on Nat Geo. I'm not trying to ruin the story. But anyway, he said one thing that like stood out to me. He goes, whenever like life got sort of tough outside of like within America and all that kind of stuff, I would then go to Africa every single time. Like I felt some sort of like out of touch from reality, you know? And I was like, damn, you know, I was born in Africa, bro. You know what I mean? And this Asian guy is coming and he's going to chill like, like in thingy, you know, yeah. and I've always had that like love for like Somalia and all of that kind of stuff. But I was like, this guy's saying he finds something in Africa, and I'm just like, he's you know he's I mean? explored more, and I was born there, like the no, continent, whatever. I've explored yeah. more definitely. Ah, oh. I've been there five times. Yes, but, uh-huh. I thought he's been to like a lot of countries and stuff. <laughs> no, he went Bro. to he went uh. to like the like the deep into um, you know those like super conservative tribes. Yeah, no clothes, nothing. And he oh, done a that's whole. Where I've na- seen him. That's where you probably seen yeah, the Nat Geo. Because I saw some pictures of him. I'm like I've seen this guy in some. Yeah, he got famous because of that before he done the graffiti murals and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, anyway, that was like Top one of my thing. Yeah. And that actually so random, but like it's very interesting. Bro, it, like it actually made me think of living over there in Africa now. Well, I'm not even like um, it's not like these guys are considered living in North Africa and stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah There's nothing wrong with it Like Yeah Ali lived in Egypt Like it's good You know yeah. Why not Is that true No it's not Um. So what's your top three Specific episodes Or like Type of podcasts It's not complicated give, give, just, give, give us something give us <laughs> <laughs> Just give us something I'm sorry <laughs> Alright I'll give you something I was speaking to you the other day About like Inshallah Future guest mm-hmm. uh, Vin from Adelaide Yes Vietnamese guy mm-hmm. He talks about public speaking Does a lot of keynote Speaking, Another he's guy. got his own podcast now with his mate Ali as well. It's sounds corny book reviews, but <laughs> 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 but it's very interesting because I should felt that one. <laughs> no, stole because my name because it's actually <laughs> great because there's some books maybe I've read a few pages and I didn't like it. It wasn't for me at that time, and then I've gone to listen to the episode, give it a chance, and hearing their perspective and like how they can implement it in their life, it just makes you think of. You know how you can implement it yours and just stand out episode. Um, I would say either 
The alchemist one. Ah, oh, lame. Oh, lame. Oh. Can we get some dislikes? Actually, some likes in the chat. Go tell us how it's a good book, Blair. <laughs> <laughs> you don't read the book? Yeah, beat it, man. Go. <laughs> People read it so they say I finished a book in a day. Yeah, the next one. Um, Soul's purpose. The Rick Rubin book, Creative mm. Art, I think. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's a good one. The one that like the the white book with the dog. The grey in the circle. The grey in the circle. Same thing. Yeah, not yeah. really. Color okay. blind, but yeah. Yeah. Go on, last because because okay. that go, like I couldn't listen to him on a podcast. It's really hard to. I think because he's a bit monotone, or maybe the way he speaks. But then his his book I resonated with, and I guess hearing it from a different angle maybe mm. kind of helps and gives you a bit of a chance. I've seen people raving about that book. Maybe yeah. we'll, we'll add it to the list as well. <laughs> what list? <laughs> you don't have a book list. Oh, okay. Come on, bro. You okay. Know. Let's go. Let's go. On here, Ali's podcast. What do you got? Yeah. So you got book reviews, number one. Yeah, I got Nick Bear's podcast. The whole podcast. Standout ep. Um, there's one. There's one guy. Like, there's I forgot his name. See, this is the problem. Yeah. Because it was a while back. Mm -hmm. But just, um, because he, I think, because most of the guests he gets are not these, the I would say the common popular guests that tend to go around other podcasts at a specific time of the year because they have a book mm -hmm. or they're just that time of the year they're available and you tend to see that so Nick Bear gets people maybe l more local but then these guys are even older than him as well and they've been in the fitness industry for years and they're still exceeding their standards of fitness and testing their limits and that's really inspiring to see so, th for the, so that's why I said po his podcast because that's in general day. That's that's the second one. The second one? Yeah. And I'm going to give Sahel's answer, so I remember his answer. When you're oh, you do? Yeah, okay. I know his answer. And the third one? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I'll say probably Chris Williamson. Hamozi? Hamozi? Yeah, like yeah. all of us. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Asha put me on to Hamozi. Like, shout out to Asha for that. He that shared, episode? Yeah, you know what's funny? You know Asia? Yeah, sorry, what random story. I know we've got to go and stuff. Um, so, we I have this group chat, yeah, with me, Asia, and Idris, okay? And whenever an episode of a podcast, and this group chat's dead, mind you, yeah? No one ever, like, like, talks in it. Because we only send things that we rate, like, very, like, very, very highly. Anyway, so I've seen that clip. I'm driving home from work. Same same drive, bang, I'm listening to the first 20 minutes. Yeah? Listen to it. Straight away, I knew it was good enough. Sent it to us here. Yeah? You know, in that group chat. Do you get what I mean? These two guys have already told me they started listening to it just on Friday. And they were just about to send it to the group chat. That's how I knew that episode like, was like a, like a banger. Because it's like, if this person, who I rate highly in terms of their recommended, we only recommend gold tier stuff, yep. is on that list. Do you get what I mean? Um, just before like we wrap up the episode, do you know how at the end of each year, YouTube does a rewind? Yeah, where they like rewind the whole year in terms of like the most, uh, I guess, eventful like situations or things that have taken place this year. All right. Just on top of your head, what's the first thing that comes to your mind in like in regards to 2023? Because you know how like you go 2020 pandemic, 2021, I don't remember. 2022, I don't remember. This year, barely you remember, but what would it be if it was this year? I'll start off with mine and it trips me out to this day, yeah? Because I was thinking about it like on the drive here. I was like, damn, when if I look back at 2023, what's been something that's like happened, yeah? Guess what the first thing that comes to mind? The submarine situation. True. How crazy is that? Like that whole submarine situation happened and it was the number one talk thing for days to come. You know what I mean? Like the whole, when it was on Twitter, all of that kind of stuff. And now if you talk to someone about a submarine situation, no one, like, like you barely remember it. Do you get what I mean? Sure. Like, remember there was like a, a clock, a timer, 48 hours, these people are going to die. Everyone was learning the word implosion. That wasn't part of my lexicon. You know what I mean? I had to like add it into What's that. What's lexicon? That's just my way of flexing. <laughs> um, it's just another word for vocabulary. Okay. Mm. I, uh, <laughs> was, the, was the Ukraine, did it start this year? The Ukraine-Russia <laughs> thing? Or was it last year? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. It was last year, yeah? That wall's been gone on for a bit. Of <laughs> <laughs> All of the time fame's cooked. I was going to say Andrew Tate in prison. Uh, that was about oh, it. That was Snake. last year too. <laughs> no, this year, January. I remember January. Because oh. it was Christmas, you remember? Yeah. And then it started. How about maybe Sneaker becoming Muslim? Bro, you air raider, bro. <laughs> so can I say something on the Andrew Tate thing sometimes? There's one boy that we know, or one of our mates, common mates that we know, where we, where the day that Andrew Tate went into prison, where, do you know what, remember what day it was? 
it was like the 28th or New Year's Day or something like that. At the start of this year, end of last year, yeah? On the same day that Andrew Tate died. <laughs> Sorry. What? <laughs> <laughs> bro, we need to eat, bro. Dude, what are you saying? What? On, the same day, on. <laughs> on the same day that Andrew Tate went into prison, something else big happened in the world. Yeah. Do you know what that was? No. Pele, Pele died. Uh, yeah. Oh, so someone died and just not Andrew. Oh, yeah. Uh. Anyway, so I asked him, like, and mind you, he's like, like, like proper so you can probably think of who it is yeah mm. he's a massive soccer head anyway so i said to him cuz like you're like pele idol in the football world whatever like he's died do you get what I mean? and mind you andrew tate number one thing that i was spoken about i said what's bigger news to you right now you know because also when andrew tate went into prison everyone was laughing about how he went for that environmental lady what was her name gretchen or something <laughs> i don't know some german girl you know that which one i'm talking about no. you know which one i'm talking about yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> anyway, so then after I said to him, which one's worse? Pele dying or Andrew Tate going to prison? <laughs> yeah, which one did you say? Bro, this guy said Pele. This guy said it's sadder that Andrew Tate went <laughs> into prison. <laughs> yes, skin. Anyway, give me your ones, boys. Um anything come to mind? Obviously Ga now Gaza it's hard and to yeah, I Palestine, guess. Israel. Obviously that's gonna be up there. Um, maybe some TikTok videos, some famous trends. But you don't have TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. What are you on about? <laughs> so I'm saying famous trends. Did any like so, ca someone? Are you saying like world events, or are you saying? Did personal? Will Smith s slap Chris Rock this year? <laughs> that was last, last year. year. That was last year. Okay, but last year was what's, an eventful year. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I'll, so I'll, you're saying world events, basically. World events. Current yeah, world events. events. Talk about Twitter takeover. That's a big one. Uh, yeah. yeah, X. Like I don't use Twitter, but just it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. And where the social media has shifted. The I'll Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk fight, that was going to happen. Oh. India going to outer space, or was it the moon? India went to the moon. Oh, yeah. That was big. <laughs> yeah, for Indians. <laughs> that's, a, oh, that's, hey. that's, a, that's a fifth of the world, bro. That's a fifth of the world. It's really good. <laughs> yeah. Appar the, hey, apparently, the, that was the number the, one watch thing in India. But the G, up, the G up of that fight <laughs> was huge, though. <laughs> yeah, even like, fights this year. Wasn't there some big fights? People talking. Were well, there any big fights this year? Oh. I think YouTube boxing is Israel Adesanya, like Sean Strickland, when he lost to Sean Strickland. I don't know if they'll put him on YouTube review. Like they no, might. That's, that's one of the biggest. That's How about One Piece making a real life uh, show on Netflix? Isn't One Piece really popular? <laughs> Are you just checking out like random <laughs> suggestions? Uh, you might be surprised if it comes on it. Yeah, yeah, that's a big thing. Give us one. That was awesome. Uh, no, 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 the, mm. That fight was bigger. Why didn't you come on? But the, I can upset, hear you. the upset was bigger. Um, oh, I got a good one. The King's Coronation. Yeah, true, true, true. Not that we care about, I know you don't care about the King or whatever, but like, oh, I do. That's my King. <laughs> that's, that's my yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's wrap it here. Let's wrap it here. Okay. If you guys finished the episode, thank you very much. I hope you guys all had a blessed 2023. You know, there's two more weeks until the next uh, end of the year. We want to do a nice goal setting 2024 episode that you guys should um, wait for.